Hey, Ravon, could you put your uh, email in the chat? I don't have it for some reason. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Starting to see the competitors all filing in. And I see a lot of the judges here with us. Rubai, you look so spiffy. Like, you're so oh, shoot. Come on, Rayvon. I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> I'll never do it. But I did finally pick up my pocket, though. That's kind of hilarious. I'm like, I'm not even going to get into why that's so hilarious. But like <laughs> this one time, Brooke and I convinced Rubai that he dropped his whole pocket and he was just like looking for it. It's like, it's on your, it's on your fans. <laughs> I'm very gullible. Rayvon's done this for a long time. He's only telling the like least embarrassing story to me. So that's good. Um, all right. Well, I'm starting to see, it looks like we've now got all the competitors here with us. I'm just trying to make sure it looks like I'm you know, here, but like my computer, my I'm trying to fix my computer oh, screen. Right on, awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, and I'm just trying to see. It looks like we've got the other judges as well. So in just a moment, I'm gonna kick it over to the affirmative team. But before I do, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for being here, both the debaters and the judges who are here in this round, as well as everybody who worked to get here. This is not just the final round of the 2021 CETA National Championship. It's also the final round of the 2020-21 debate season. And a lot of folks worked very hard to get us the season finale. And I just wanna say on behalf of all of them, thank you. And I also wanna say on behalf of all these debaters here, um, they can open you know, their speeches if they'd like to you know, with some thank yous, but I'm gonna to apologize to everybody on the other end if there's somebody they leave out because they have to be a little bit brief we have a lot of folks who volunteered to judge this debate who are judging out on the East Coast um, and are going to be thinking through this one very late. So that's the only thing that I'll say is if the debaters are brief, it is because they're being considered their judges. And uh, I apologize for them. If there's anybody that they would like to think that, you know, just there's not enough time here tonight to allow. Um, but with all that being said, I'm now going to say just thank you one more time to everybody at CETA who make this happen and toss it over to the affirmative from the University of Central Oklahoma. Uh, to give their thank yous and opening remarks. And congratulations to all the competitors for being here. And thank you again to this wonderful final round panel. Thanks, Rubai. We appreciate you. Um, the 1EC has been sent. Um, and once everyone like confirms that they get the 1EC, I'll start with a thank you, if that's all right with everyone. Okay, does anyone not have it? Okay. First, I'd like to start off by thanking some of the UCO administration that has been so supportive of Broncho Debate. First and foremost is thanking Drew Duke, who has been the champion of UCO Debate at the higher up level and helped keep the program alive. Drew's support extends not just in terms of helping wins, but support for the program, but also there is the support the coaches and students over the years for providing an open ear and support through the times. We would like to thank uh, President Patty Neohold Rakumar, who has provided support for travel uh, back when we got to do that and a good programming budget for this year and scholarships for our team. Uh, the president has provided endless support for the team. We would like to thank Dr. Catherine Webster, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts at UCO, who has given UCO debate a home in the college and has provided immense support for us throughout her tenure as Dean. The whole college has provided every bit of support possible to make sure that we could be here today. We also would like to thank UCOSA and everyone in the Office of Student Affairs who has provided the funding for our program. Thank you to all of our great alumni, including Zach's dad, hope you're watching. There are a lot of branches out there, who, some who went to UCO, some who went to Central State that have supported us through the years. The Bronco legacy is a long one and it was their, in de their dedication to the activity that has made all of this possible. It's been 31 years since UCO has been in CETA finals and we plan on making the most of it. Uh, I would like to personally thank a couple of people. Uh, first, I'll start with uh, non-debate people. 
Uh, I'd like to thank all of my family. You all are fantastic. All particularly shout out my grandpa and my dad for raising me. Uh, my lovely girlfriend, Hannah, who might be watching this uh, of 10 years. I love you so much. Thanks for everything. My best friend, Wyatt, who has been supporting me and sending me good vibes and funny memes all weekend to keep me in, a lot, keep me in it. I appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Beebe, uh, my personal mentor for shaping my career and as a scholar. I'd like to thank my former coaches who have done a lot to shape me. Uh, Ish Kissinger and everyone at More Debate. Uh, I wouldn't be here without you. And uh, I don't just mean in the seat of finals, I might not be here without you. Uh, the opportunities you provided for me in debate meant a lot to me. Uh, and I wouldn't be the same without him. Uh, James Childs, Austin Vance, your help uh, in shaping me from a raw high school uh, person to uh, so sometimes good at debate, I guess, uh, was very helpful. Uh, Eli Brennan, uh, who when I got to UCO, I felt like always believed in me and has always shaped the way I read and think through things that has made this possible. Uh, I would like to thank all of Oklahoma Debate the, that has dwindled in recent years, but the community that was provided to me uh, was instrumental. Uh, my former partners and teammates, uh, Megan McBride, my high school partner who's watching at home and cheering me on, I appreciate you. Chris, for taking a chance on a uh, freshman kid to be your 2N, your junior year. And Nix, for helping me to return to debate in school and being a great partner to me. Uh, Derek and Jazzy, UCOHS, for making this possible and sending all of the good vibes and shaping the way that I think about uh, this argument and the people it implicates. Um, I want to thank the other people on our team, uh, past or present. Uh, Elijah Lott, uh, your presence on the squad has meant everything to me, and I'm really glad you were always there to support us. Uh, Garrett Holsworth, uh, I appreciate you and the energy you bring. Kyle, your work on the activity and dedication is uh, amazing. I would also like to thank the Debate community. Uh, I can't thank everyone for the reason Rubai said, but um, the community means an incredible a lot to me. And I'll mention a couple of people, but if you ever debated or judged me, uh, I appreciate you and you've shaped the way I've thought about the world and debate. I'll shout out very quickly, uh, uh, Kamani from Southwestern, appreciate you and your energy this weekend. Uh, Emporia KS, our clashes and research over the years has uh, made me a better debater and a better thinker. Uh, the entire class of 2020, I'm so sad that you didn't get this opportunity that I'm getting for my last debate, uh, but I dedicate this to you. I would also like to thank all of uh, the South Central and Mid-America CETA districts. Uh, obviously very good that we're both in the finals, uh, but your support in general has been amazing in those communities. Um, judges, uh, Logri, Anthony, you both have known me for a very long time since my first run in debate and have always sort of encouraged me in a way that I really appreciate. Uh, a couple of people that aren't here, uh, Amber and DSRB have shaped my thinking in the way that I think about a lot of these things through judging me. Uh, and uh, uh, Taylor Bro, I really always appreciate the way that your thoughtful RFDs and the way you shaped the uh, sort of development of these things. Yeah, I think that's all I've got. And with that, I'll give the one AC. Oh, I'm glad that he reminded me. Uh, Zach, I have a little blurb at the bottom here for you. Um, oh, yeah, I actually missed a whole thing. I'm sorry. I <laughs> um, First, I want to thank Zach. Uh, Zach came in last year as a frosh and has grown so much and challenged me so much and has done so much for our program and our team. And there's no one who I wouldn't, who I would rather have sitting next to me for my last debate. Uh, Leah, Matt, and Shay are three current coaches. Leah uh, actually started coaching me in junior high and has inaugurated me into the activity. Uh, Shay, in his way, has always shown uh, so much love and compassion toward me and uh, just really shaped the, our argumentation. And Matt has done everything to keep this program alive and kicking uh, so that we can uh, be here and do the things that we're gonna do right now. Now I'm gonna give the 1AC. I'm really sorry, you all. Okay, if anyone needs to stop me, uh, let me know. Can we get a quick Zoom emoji thumbs up from anyone uh, with their screen off? I'm here. I don't need to be told what to do, though. I'm ready when y'all are. I'm good. Okay, great. Thank you all. My God.
Modern international relations are the projection of the sovereign self to the realm of the, realm of the nation state alone and fearful for the potential of anarchy states engaged in the ever-locking dance of alliance commitment, recommitment, and abandonment. The practice of nation state IR becomes the gold standard of humanity and civilization again which all political differences cast as separately primitive, either tameable enough for assimilation and exploitation or wild enough to demand elimination. King in 17. Near universal acceptance of legitimacy of the state form a violent settler colony. Indigenous population is often transformed to labor for colonial extraction. The underlying motivation to expunge the settler sovereignty in the international system is an anarchy environment where self interested in rational, uh, in rational states compete against each other for power. The discipline of our effectively cast indigenous peoples as primitive sanctions that the lands then foreclose the possibility for certain political communities more than denying liberation and enforce the view of humanity as a set of political states with Europe at the center. Foreign policy actively contributes to the ratio of indigenous political difference, contemporary political indigenous bodies physically and uh, normalizes and affirms settler colonialism more policy itself is a manifestation of settler colonialism and this violence turn inward is settler fascism, physical and ideological fortification of the settler colony produce inevitable microfascist commitment uh, commi uh, violence, Josh 19. Fascism in settler colonial states must be thought as the consequence of the logic of colonialism, microfascism produced in and around institutional state violence, anti-fascist movements that leave the settler state outside of their range, leave themselves vulnerable to settler nationalism, anti-fascists should not simply be opposed to settler colonialism and as a turn away from settler state and towards indigenous communities, values, nothing to interdependence, many in indigenous understand the land as a teacher instead of viewing the land as terrenalists like humans and non-humans together in the absence of coercion, hierarchy, and authoritarian power instead forming relationships and these deep and positive respect and order for self determination and or freedom and digital treasures offer alternatives to colonial and fashion conceptions of people and, and more than human world the imagining of future without fascism does not involve indigenous res uh, resurgence reaffirms settler of futurity kind of normativity teaches how to live li our lives in relation to other people in non-human life forms uh, in a profoundly non-authoritarian non-dominating non-exploitative manner grounded normativity involves uh, following uh, the lead of not just an indigenous people's system imagine one little group but uh, the specific indigenous people's nations tribes and uh, that live and have lived on the lands we find ourselves in not only does this uh, make us accountable to address the indigenous and settler colonies itself so the only way to attack us is the truth which are deeply intertwined with settler society fascism and settler colonialism in form, place based and decolonial anti fascist action and this settler fascism requires the death of native and black people and uh, black life in order to secure its material and symbolic coordinates. The ultimate horizon of settler polity can only ever slow down the creep of fascism in different form. Robinson in seventeen. Left wing, no fascism, but some form of particularly virulent authoritarian, uh, authoritarian nationalism, settler colonialism, the traditional formulation, the definition of fascism are in, uh, insufficient. Fascism in, in, is imperialist repression tur 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 turned inward. Anti fascist theory and practice must condemn settler colonialism, symbolic of social and political orders, literal material meaning of the land, as well as the direct means of those psychic, uh, psychic so political, social, cultural, ideological, and economic fields soaked in blood of native, uh, of native and black fields. Fascism in the bucket only occur in a context always already defined by the two fundamental axes as native, eliminate. Nation and anti-black violence are two axes while being somewhat incommensurable. Also, overlap the second material life of white settler colonial society is sutured together by anti-black and uh, anti-native and anti-black solidarity. Settler colonialism is the fundamental drive towards the elimination of native peoples. These processes are daily reinforced in the symbolic coding native life under settler colonialism to defy the factors of death, the grammars of civ suffering of native life, clearing and civilization not only destroy native bodies but also evacuate native sovereignty from the spatial coordinates. The kind of different settler temporality the native is made into feral savage flesh. The ontological ordering of the settler world was never sovereign, has no possibility of ever being sovereign, transposed into native from the Body on the settler, the grammar civilization halls at the end of minds, any values and places them within the prerogative of the settler. Blackness is equated with an inherent status of grievability and criminality and is marked with it for permanent exclusion from the social fold. The uh, underlying logic has remained what does fascist violence mean to us when we already live on grievable conditions? We should not ignore the potential for violence and excess of settler colonial operating foundational anti black and anti native violence of the political project sustains the northern black of settler colonies, but has, artic uh, but has always articulated a war over life and death with two, funda uh, with two fundamental aims the elimination and dispossession of native peoples and the segregation of violence, exclusion of black peoples. Liberal and fascism in the, in the contours of the Northern Bloc can be properly placed on the same as a political continuum rooted in native and black death, whether the colonial states of liberal or fascist fundamental warfare remains at best. The choice lies between a slow, democratic, and a fast fascist colonialist, anti fascist theory, and practice within an explicitly communist perspective is unable to offer solution because native and black ghosts, both uh, living and dead, haunt the possibility of socialism. Settler colonialism can only in the own configuration of rearrangements of settler power into a new form. We cannot choose between democratic colonialism and fascist colonialism because the ultimate problem is the same colonialism and the only viable response is an anarcho indigenous rejection of alliance is non participation in the institution the structure of the colonial relationship is a necessary condition for political activity plat sixteen Anarchy indigenous and foreground is critique of state capitalism of colonialism by supremacy patriarchy that we find in incarnation rejection of alliance, non participation in the institution, the structural colonial relationship, direct action, physical resistance, confrontation of state power, a place which is linked with the uh, link with the rejection of punishment processes. The anarchy indigenous refers to an ideal that remains to be materialized, and our reconfiguration of international relations is one that challenges the nation. Is the fine political actor in Western IR prefer the autonomous agencies of collective person in the necessary condition for any negotiation of politics and power? Lasky 11.
Colonialism and imperialism continue to be deeply implicated in conflict, critique, power relations, the West only in system of nation state sovereign, uh, sovereignty, feeling a sound to ideological and discursive practices, gender structures, and, hi- and hierarchies, and digital uh, reflexive creative linkages between place visceral and transnational networks, uh, and, and active self determination, reconfiguring international relations, and challenging neo colonial hierarchies within the state and interstate system. The self is not the sovereign man, nor is it the na- nation, the working body politic, Western political science, uh, non hierarchical unsettling of state authorities, not, uh, autonomous agencies of collective personhood, reveal possibilities for more than just. Uh, the, just negotiations of attentions and alignment with the realities of our shareable power circulates, multifarious relations, interceptivities are produced, reproduced, continually contested in governmentality of our time, and prioritize an analysis of relations at the expense of nations. Western political science is dogmatic appeals to discrete nation states the bulwark of colonial desire, which disavows the violent operation of genocidal power internally in order to secure the power of imperial powers externally. Lasky 11. Eric indigenous was relational grounded in the earth. Western political science has been present on the nation of uh, as irrational and realizable and unimaginable death and, uh, and irrational devastation. What if we focus on the na- relations with not the nation, the uh, national part of international relations sovereignty uh, merges through the discursive production of new framework city with encounter uh, Indians are included within the system only to be disciplined. Indigenous anarchy was constructed as a threat and quelling the start became the impetus of imperialism, violent colonialism, and the interlocking projects of capitalism and colonialism, imperialism, and imperial rights, supremacy, race, and you'll function as means of and we're consolidation of nation states and our grounded relationality is mutually exclusive to the proprietary logics of settler colonialism exceptionalizing human activity requires the inevitable reproduction of genocide and slavery bird at all 18 grounded relationality such between relation to and from land living relationalities which is the non-human world the materiality of land having individual significance ways exceed global conception of the human relationality when land is understood as property but as relation with an agency in, in, in itself serves as an ontologically different different concept of political that refuse to conquest can land as a source of relation rather than the set of boundaries the defined politics under which digital sovereignty and black revolution can rebuild capacity for relationality rather than enact exclusivity or inclusion liberal freedom sale to halt the appropriation of collective life vote refuses to compare and oppose black and native dispossession instead offers what it conceive of debt as disownership settler colonies became a kind of carnival blood at decent bodies as a site of pure labor those struggling against colonials must turn away from the colonial state and find transformative practices that uphold relations of reciprocity and shape our engagement with the human or non-human world, the land grounded, normativity provides the ethical way of knowing and being that is more exp- expensive than those intelligent prioritize the human as exceptional indigenous interventions reorient uh, knowledge and power within and through and in, indigenous in returns to land. The loss of land is not just the loss of sovereignty, it is the loss of relationships of the land itself activates, fosters, nourishes, and this form of agency undermines dominant spatial relations that produce violence. Relational understanding of land politics are a means of resistance. Settler fascist conditions also produce the erasure of black spatial Relations that are the basis for collective organizing. For example, the Black Land Project reasserts non sovereign relations to the land. Talk and guess 17. Settler colonialism is attempted to re- reduce the human relationships of land to property and vehicle to retain civil rights accompanied by removing African peoples in the property to be made into property. Black people must be ca- ca- kept landless and thus exceptionalized but from settler communities. Black geography certainly material can be lived in unusual and unexpected ways. We can imagine possibilities in room for interpretation. Geographies of settler colonialism is rooted in non blackness, thus invalidating the separate cartographic needs, expressions, and knowledges. The legacy of racial disposition under right space and place. And the the co- connections between the, what are uh, real ownership and but uh, through racial codes and mark the bodies on geographic discourses. And practices making property and ownership are central to hegemonic relations with settler colonialism and anti-blackness and space and place give black life meaning in a world where blackness is deemed ungeographic. This to me is a space where we have these these contextual conversations that reveal commonality for shared visions of the future. Tuck at all 14. The Black Land Project formed to analyze stories about uh, about the relationship between black, black people, land, and place, space, and place give black lives meaning in a world that has deemed black populations in their attended geographies and non-geographic. The falseness with blackness is non geographic is only in human and non-human terms. The production of, uh, of black spaces is tied to locations that were uh, and are explicitly produced in conjunction with race, racism, captivity, and economic profit. Colonial geographies require black displacement and placelessness. Black people have always experienced occupied and constructed place of black. A priority project is to recognize that black geographies have been constructed in spite of landscape domination of black immigration the mappings are evidence of struggle over social space black people telling stories of personal geographies have identified significant variants in their relationship with land uh, with, with land the idea that black people's relationship with land is ungeographic often presumes that oversimplified relationship market relationship okay i need some water and then i can cross next okay i'm good Okay, uh, the last key evidence talks about how we need to focus on relations instead of nations. What is relation? What is relationality? The uh, so the bottom three pieces of evidence in the one AC, the bird as well as the tuck at all and tuck and guess evidence describe a process of grounded relationality as being something that is particularly good. We think those relationships are started that from an. That doesn't answer what relationality is. You said re- grounded relationality good. How do you understand what relationality is? How do you determine what a relation is? Our argument is the ways in which people relate to one another, as well as the way that land has its own the relationships to those things. relate to one another. So okay. we think our argument is less land. about relationality writ large and about the 
specificity of grounded relationality, which we think it's about the specificity important. of grounded relationality. Okay, let's talk about that. The talking guest evidence talking about the Black Land Project talks yep. about how to be made into property, Black people must be kept landless. How does this explain uh, violence that happens to Black Indigenous folks in Africa? Our argument is that about the ways in which the settler colonial situation is structured. Our argument is that 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 because all of those things are very placial, that those things are always contextual to that place. That, so that argument, we've made an argument about turtle wait, 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 wait. Grant, that doesn't answer my question about how your theorization is able to account for uh, violence where black people, uh, uh, violence, uh, where black people are made into property, where they are not kept landless. Our, I, I, our argument is that the necessary condition for the settler colonial component of that is to be kept landless. I don't understand what this means about an externality. Our argument is about the ways that the settler relationship structures those things. Okay, is all relationship to land good? Uh, we've said grounded relationality is good. I don't know, like there are other relationships is, to land. Like everything is, is a grounded, relation to land. Is all grounded relationality good? Yes. Okay, why? Grounded relationality produces relationships to and from land that produce kinship structures that we think are good. Particularly, what it creates a form of spirit. What kinship structures are produced at the places or sites of lynchings? Our argument, well, I think that's actually important. So uh, I think Zach is, so our argument is that uh, those places are very important to understand how the land has been a mechanism of violence and how we can deal with those histories and how we can sort well, why, of understand we, those things. How do we deal with those histories? How do we what deal with those histories? Recuperation of those histories? So the land is always marked by violence. That is an inevitable that, construction. That does not answer my argument. Yeah, yes, it does. It's a for recuperation of those places. Because those, those places are there. We have to find ways of producing relations for a future because what, they exist and we exist I'm asking with them. what that possibility of relation is. I, I just explained that. I don't understand. You, you did not. That's fine. Uh, let's go to one and see. Hey, sir. Could you give me one second? I'm going to try to reconnect. I'm a little laggy. Of course. Okay, I should be good now. Okay, cool. Um, before I read the 18C, I wanted to give a couple thank yous. First and foremost, I would like to thank the people who've made all this possible, my parents. I couldn't list everything that you've given to me, even if we had time. And of course, I want to keep it brief. So I just want to say I truly do appreciate what you've done for me. Coaches, David Kilpatrick, Kevin Clark, Nico Juarez, Adam Lipton, PSN, Chris Randall, for all your endless hours cutting cards, working on arguments, not even making me a better debater, but just a better person. Uh, in terms of our university directors of debate, Brendan Bakey, director of speech, Randy Cox, former director of debate, Joel Rollins, the Moody College staff, faculty communication studies office, Jennifer Bencourt, Lisa Mosley, Sal Palomaro, communication studies department chair, Dr. Craig Scott, and the dean of Moody College, Dr. Jay Brunhart. Thank you for creating a program that promotes excellence and lets us be here today. Uh, personal thank yous to my friends, Millie Vikas, Arnav, amongst others who listen to me ramble about a decision or an argument that you might not even care about, but being there, showing support and endless amounts of care and love, teammates from Sammy Ben to everyone else at the 40 Acres that have been here now and even in the past, 
when you aren't here in person, you're still making sure your presence is felt. Uh, the community, uh, every debate we've had, every individual we've debated, every judge is giving us feedback. I appreciate each and every one of you for making me better, pushing me to learn more, grow, to theorize better, to become just a little smarter. And of course, a special shout out to Julian Asia. And finally, Zach. Honestly, enough couldn't be said about your commitment to debate. Growing, uh, you've made me grow, you've made debate grow more than anything, and you've given more to the sense of team than I ever thought possible. No matter what time of day it was, what Zach had going on in his life, or anything outside of it, Zach was always there. He always, he always had your back. And I can't express enough how thankful I am for that, for having my debt back, teaching me more than I ever thought was possible, and of course, being the other half of the Texas DW. It's a, Honor to debate with you in your last career ever. Well, let's get started. Is anybody not ready? Cool. To critique the slave is horizontally and vertically separated from life. The US is the person that borders to the walls, and all slaves are non human prisoners. Experience the gratuitous finds of a world defend against reformation cannot solve, just like emancipation did. And consequences don't matter because the slave is also dead. This is unique from the native because natives keep their being, even though when losing their sovereignty, sex, and intent. To suffer the loss of sovereignty is deplorable, uh, yet to suffer condensation, unable, and that's the one that's you might remember, yes, lose your motherland, but not to lose, to lose your mother, the social death under which you should be denied to restart for an alienation, genealogical isolation, characteristic and suffering that goes directly to the heart of what is critical in slave form is alienation, the loss of the ties, both is the birth of both ascending and descending generations, it's alienation of the slave from all former legible and forced ties the blood for many attachment to groups or localities other than those who are chosen in the slave was ultimate human tools and proportional and disposal of their masters, which the alienation isolation is critical, rendered the the notion of descendants of slaves is strict oxymoron, is that horizontal gets ties to Contemporary is supposed to reduce those who the degradation of slaves is more fundamental to that of colonists whose status obtains in the network of appropriate human relations that, uh, rather than the collection of or dispersal of other class of things, human capacity to draw the indices of cultural culpability before the live and the potential of slavery system rendered illegitimate and illegal a prior the functions of the channel slavery are largely maintained despite reconstruction and preserved in uh, Jim Crow, the ghetto, and the prison. The language of race developed in both the modern period of the context of slave trade and if our context is the context and that context is the world, then uh, that is our principal insight reveal the contemporary predicament predicament of Freedom, there's such a thing you just say is racial blackness is necessary condition for enslavement that matters most freedom for, from the rule of slave law requires only that one be considered non black and the ass revitalization of sovereignty misidentifies as a crisis what is fundamentally an uh, opportunity for anti blackness to upgrade itself in response to indigenous political demands. The supposed paradox of the one he invokes, quote, show that sovereignty doesn't work by using sovereignty relies on the fantasy of consciousness raising as a medium of legal interdiction that steers their project to psychosexual dynamics of anti black bobogenics, which retreat into the allegedly modified category, category of personhood, if only to free itself from black sex and succeed. Condensation is not a necessary condition of enslavement because slaves that need not to be colonial subjects and do not face the directive you work for me and slaves need to be the style of colonial subjects since they do not face the directive you go away. The directive uh, to confound the position I'd like to describe that makes the point to colonize is uh, the illicit of permanent seizure of the body in the central enslavement. The illusion of the body can be found in Rifkin who seeks to displace pla race by place of juxtaposing body with land and rights with sovereignty. Therefore, juxtaposing black as embodying what it is inhabiting without thinking direct, directly, uh, diacritically about the black innovation that native embodiment serves to disembody and de-radicalize the native peoples which is to gain or maintain distance from racial blackness which can be done by counting the body anything just an endemic to the enslavement as far as the slavery bands and reproduction of enslaved peoples the people that have studied do not ask what slavery is it is historic histories and political Structure, social and economic functions, micro sexual dynamics and consequences. They do not want to know about if they evaluate it through their own losses. We trust that their only way to political imagination that is not out the language, lineage, land, labor, or about the loss of any self that could be experienced, such loss that any politics and a recovery is bound to regard the slave as the position shall be. And that one should hear this in the resonance between political theory of the universal, particular psychological theory of the unconscious, their theory of indigeneity and native sovereignty reproduces anti blackness and reduces slavery to coerced labor while creating a chain of equivalence between black and non black occupation of na native land, even to the right about cellular colonialism. You should have a negative to endorse decolonization without sovereignty section and 14. I just learned several elements of folk concept of racial slavery in which slavery is reduced to forced labor and illusion of slave, uh, an illusion of slave holding and an age flex among native peoples in which uh, Indian slave, slavery is ignored or marginalized the liberal project narrative of emancipation immune to black radicalism and a misidentification of black and inhibition to with white and other non-black settlement in which the fact that black is the disbanded fundamental rights of the colonies but displaced a large land-based consent of nations. These elements contribute to post-racialism by diminishing the significance of race and thinking to relative structural position of blackness and non-black privileges to establish contributions to seeking justice to their Settler colonial relations with indigenous peoples. The argument is motivated by the desire for settler decolonization without and against sovereignty. We might consider black studies as a mean of interpretation in relation to native studies at the point where the latter loses touch with itself and unconscious knowledge emerges.
to the infrastructure, though their focus on forms of contingent violence made legible through civil studies recognition of struggles on the plane of humanity. But this does not apply to blackness because violence against black folks is ontological and gratuitous. It's coded onto black flesh and it exits for no boarding of no other project than the continuation of the human Wilderson and 14. Every other group lives in the context of violence, which has a, a, a psychological grounding where they can write a sentence about why they're experiencing that to violence for a black person. This is an ongoing tactic of strategy for human renewal. The violence against us becomes a tactic which within a strategy to create many places, not attacking an organ in an uh, ongoing strategy to take our land away or to take our rights back. And we never had any rights to structure, which uh, human beings are recognized by other human beings incorporated in the community, community of human beings. They have to save it as like this as something that consumes blackness, Africanness, and making it impossible to divide slavery for blackness. Even if I say to myself, I'm not the same, we don't make our own way in the world. And sometimes we build a point of mobilization or kind of civilization that is in some way informed that this we just set it off the response is so overwhelmingly violent that it doesn't seek to end the conflict it seeks to crush us in the point that nobody ever gets the idea that was heard again whereas the affirmative posits their sociogenic intervention as radical rupture in the formulation of colonial assemblages the alternative dwells within the inescapably historic historical stillness of anti-black violence our politics affirms a perversive decarication and non-sovereignty of the slave instead of seeking some brighter future only unflinching charismatic analysis moments that interpret interminable radicalization of all politics towards an abolitionist demand that cannot be explicitly formulated in advance of violent deeds, sex and 14. We might contrast the concept of colonialism with the counterpart of black studies, racial colonialism, whereas Native studies sets out to pronounce the decolonial intervention of black studies dwells within an uninheritable, inescapable history and muses upon a untransmittable horizon for discourse and imagination. The letter is an endeavor that teaches less through the pedagogical instruction than an exploratory transmission through uh, posing a question of procedure for study uh, for black uh, studies, whether they may lead the modern world, owes its very existence to slavery. A politics of abolition can never be a politics of resurgence, recovery, or recuperation. It can only one begin with degeneration, decline, dissolution, abolition, the perverse affirmation of demarcation and uprooting of NATO, the nation, and the notion of politics without claim, without demand, even our politics whose demand is too radical to be formulated in advance. Its deeds, abolition consists the affirmation of unsovereign state, the derelict monstrous, the wretched figures of the order to altogether from the colonized slave. Blackness is coterminous with slavists, refuse their narrative arc of equilibrium, disequilibrium, and equilibrium restored as demanded by the affirmative social death brackets the possibility for every moment of plenitude for blackness in terms of case wilderson and 16 blackness is coterminous with slaveness there was never a prior prior meta moment of plenitude blackness cannot be disimplicated from slavery the narrative arc of slavery is not an arc at all but a flat line historically and redemption are extremely bound both are inherently anti-black redemption semiotics of a meeting would be incoherent because adjacency is supplemental contradiction, is essential coherence, abject in many stabilized redemption of those who do not need a gratuitous fine space into temporal and spatial logics and selling unattainable and slave become socially dead by way of recruitment. Social death is not irreconcilable with a moment of plenty to narrative event of equilibrium. The instantiation of social death becomes an event of disequilibrium, one of pregnant with the possibility of change, and that of change becomes a third episode in the generic narrative arc, a movement of equilibrium in store. The slave is still not constituted as a subject of transaction. The snarl of manu manumission uh, op upsets the possibility of a black person case. Vote negative on presumption. Ask yourself questions of scale and scope. The one who sees the method does nothing to change the infrastructure of settler colonialism. Two, their foundation of ideology draws from Alfred's theory of warrior ethnic wasase. Their card, Texas, is in yellow pillar in 16. It finds a main conceptual root in Alfred's book, what's say Alfred ambitious the anarcho editions the warrior ethic transferred into politics. That's a reason to reject the AF or Alfred has sexually assaulted students and his theories are rooted in patriarchal ideologies, which turns the AF in the case tonight and 18. There are problems with the foregrounding Alfred, Alfred debate of public statements that underlie survivors of sexual harassment and abuse. These statements were no surprise because communities have been aware for sometimes Alfred's harmful views and behavior. It's hard to reconcile the inclusion of Alfred, the inclusion of Alfred that unfortunately first their portrayal of patriarchal dynamics. Zach, do you want anything else? No? Okay, cool. Cross up. Good. Yeah. Okay. The last argument. Uh, is this a pick? Do you do the F without Alfred? Uh, we think that Alfred is a reason to reject the 1AC. It is not a pick. Argument. It turns okay. okay. Um, what about, so th this argument is one of our pieces of evidence cites uh, a bad person. Why is that sufficient reason to I, reject I the team? I honestly think that's like not giving your evidence the credit or the actual thing the evidence says. It does not just cite Alfred. But the very concept of anarcho indigenism is based on Alfred's theory of a warrior ethnic transferred into politics, which we have critiqued as one being a reason that results in patriarchal ide ideologies, as well as Alfred's investment within those things. To say that it just merely cites it, it's just like not honest to your scholarship. Okay, the first part of that claim, what about the affirmatives uh, method be is patriarchal as a result of that? Well, that, that is our argument, is that the way the founders and the theories conceptualize 
the world and conceptualize the way that politics ought to go down influences the way that the politics are enacted. If we win that such foundations were problematic, okay. we should vote negative instead because there's only a risk that it recreates a violence and status quo. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the criticism, what, is, what does it mean to be sovereign? Yeah. The criticism defines uh, sovereignty in terms of an ability uh, to lay claim to some notion of space or place. Okay, the ability to claim space or place. What occurs- The ability with... to lay claim to space or place, i.e. the ability to lay some claim to relationality to space or place per your grounded uh, uh, per your grounded relationality arcs made in the one place. Okay, understood. Um, what is the conception of space, place, land, that the alternative posits? The alternative uh, posits a radical de uh, dwelling within the historical stillness of blackness and affirming a radical de-race nation in non-sovereignty of the slave. We think that that is necessary to abolish the concepts of, sover uh, of sovereignty and, uh, and race and race nation that necessarily cohere the human against the uh, de-racinated unsovereign slave. What does that mean for land as an agent? We think that the way in which the 1AC theorizes land as an agent can only uh, understand land in its violent capacity to blackness and also does not provide a way for theorizing land as an agent to theorize the gratuitous violence of blackness, i.e. The, uh, the ways that black folks are still subject to gratuitous violence even when they have identified positively a relationship to land or land's uh, agential capacity in relation to them. We think- Last the question. Hmm? Is the land a subject? The argument is that land as a subject can only exist in a relation of gratuitous violence to blackness. Okay, we'll prep. Stop to 10 used. I'll put that in the chat.
Okay, uh, I sent the document. Um, yeah, so before the 2AC, I'd like to thank a bunch of people. Um, I want to start off. Oh, is everyone here? All right, I think everyone's here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I get everyone's here. Yeah. So, uh, to before the two AC, I just want to like thank a bunch of people. Um, God, I don't know how I'm gonna do this without crying, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> I want to start by thanking my dad. Um, he was in semifinals of this tournament in 1990 um, as a part of the UCO team, and is the reason I joined debate. Um, and it's just like it's an honor to be able to follow in his legacy and like just make it to the final round. Um, yeah, shout out Sean Huffman of UCO. I think it was HP at the time. Um, it's just, it's really surreal to me that I was able to like do the same kind of things that he did. Um, growing up in a completely different part of the country, debating in a completely different circuit. Um, it's just surreal to me. Um, yeah, so like, I, I got you beat now, dad. So um, you can't brag anymore. Uh, and yeah, I, that's, that's who I want to thank first. And that's, I want to thank my mom. She's always been like so supportive of me in debate, driving me to tournaments when I was, you know, a freshman, couldn't drive yet in high school and always making sure I had food before I went, um, always made sure I had everything packed before I went. She just did everything for me. God, and it's just, it's just so hard to like give this speech, but, um, I want to thank my family writ large just because they've always been so supportive of me and everything that I do. Um, so yeah, next I want to thank my uh, high school coach, Christy Hodgkiss. Uh, I like to call her lady H. That's what she told us to call her in high school. Um, we, I come from a small school in Texas uh, called North Lamar high school. Um, we don't, we're not well known nationally. I was never, I never got a TOC bid. I was, I don't even think I was ever in a TOC bid round. Like, um, the furthest I ever got with that with North Lamar was TFA State uh, double octo finals my senior year, which just she provided the foundation for me to just create my own visions of debate. I mean, she when I was a freshman, we were going to like all UIL Texas tournaments, small school local tournaments where like they were in like planned meets needs cases and stuff like that. Just like, you know, and I just uh I want to thank her for like switching and like letting us go to more like TFA tournaments when I was a senior. That just kind of helped me get a little bit better. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to take too long. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going. I want to thank uh, Katie Hodgkiss, who is my current girlfriend and also my high school coach's daughter. Um, we went to the same high school together. Uh, we also were on the debate team together. She beat me in state finals. What? Oh, she beat me in uh, UIL state finals in 2018. Um, so she always made sure to hold that over me. Uh, but she's always been super supportive of me. She moved to Oklahoma City for me. Um, it's it's just been so awesome. You're right, Jaleesa. She's not in finals right now, though. That's true. <laughs> I love you, Katie. Uh, thank you. I know you're watching. Uh, next, I want to thank Garrett Hallsworth, um, who is my best friend literally for like 20 years. I'm And keep in mind, I'm like 20 years old. Um, Garrett was my best friend ever since childhood, moved with me up here to UCO and was debating with me, was also my partner my senior year. I won a state championship with him. Um, he's always been like super supportive for me and just helped me in every way possible. And even, even though uh, he's technically not on the squad anymore, he still made sure to hype me and grant up at every opportunity possible. Yeah, um, I wanna thank some of my high school partners. I wanna thank Kay Edwards. Um, she was my first partner in high school and taught me pretty much everything I know about debate aside from like coaches, but um, she helped me learn just like how to navigate debate and everything. Next, I wanted to thank Colin Hodgkiss, uh, my partner after that. Uh, they taught me everything about like biopower and agombin and basically taught me how to do the K and the KF in like a decent way, you know, for high school Texas debate. Um, and is also uh, my high school coach's son uh, and my uh, girlfriend's brother. So yeah, family to me. I see him all the holidays. Um, I want to thank Still Musgrove, Mason Romaley, Jordan Walters, uh, other people from my high school team that I'm missing that have just always been helping for me and all of high school Texas debate. Uh, yeah. Um, and then moving on to like the 
college list, I want to thank UCO, HS, Derek, and Jazzy. They've always been super supportive and helpful with arguments um, and have always just supported us like every possible way. Um, I want to thank some previous UCO alumni like John Parsley, uh, my, my father's partner, who helped me get like scholarships to UCO um, and just was always been really supportive. Drew Duke and Dud Duke. Um, Drew has been really supportive of me here at UCO, really good friends with my father, and has just like kind of taken me under the wing here at UCO and really uh, helped me kind of just navigate uh, this campus and everything. And I want to thank uh, his father, Dud Duke, and the legacy that he left here at UCO. Um, I know my dad uh, really appreciates it and everything that Dud did. Um, so I, I kind of think of his Dud as like my, my granddad coach, if that made sense. Uh, uh, next, I want to thank some people on the squad, like Elijah Lott, who is one of my best friends and has always been super helpful in everything. Uh, Kyle Wendland, uh, another member of the squad that has always been supportive, no matter what, texts me literally all the time before rounds to say good luck. Um, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, some coaches, I want to thank Nitz Moore, who was a partner to Grant, but only a coach to me, um, who has just helped me so much in everything and has been like one of the most supportive people uh, for me. Um, yeah. Uh, Leah Maddie, who joined the squad last year when I was a frost and just like has been so supportive, not only just like with arguments, but emotionally and has been honestly one of the brightest lights in my debate career that I've ever had. She has been phenomenal. Um, Shay Bunis, obviously Shay is just like amazing when it comes to argumentation and debate. Shay has helped me with everything. Um, I wouldn't be here at all with Shay. The, the learning curve I had to take from leaving high school Texas debate to UCO, Shay just accelerated that so much. Uh, Matt Moore, obviously he's just been phenomenal supporting us. Um, and probably one of the funniest people I know. It's just, uh, we couldn't do any of this without those three specifically. Um, and then briefly, I want to thank like the Mid-America region, South Central regions of CETA. Um, you know, we got the two final teams here, so we must be doing something right. Uh, yeah. And finally, I want to thank Grant, who has taught me more about debate in like not even two years than I anyone I can ever imagine. Grant has been like the most just, I, I can't even put it into words. Grant has been amazing for me. Grant has taught me everything I know about debate at this point when it comes to at least college debate, taught me everything about the K, taught me everything about this argument. I'd probably read zero seller colonials and books when I got here. Uh, Grant made me read those books. Grant made sure that I knew what I was talking about. And it's just been amazing being your partner. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's everyone. If I'm missing anyone, then it's Brian's fault. <laughs> but I love you, Brian. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, the order is the F and the critique. Uh, yeah, just, I know that was long, so I'm sure you're all just ready for this to start, so. <laughs> all right. I will start and just a second, here we go. H try or die for relations outside of anti black settler hierarchies, alliance of relations serve, uh, nation states serve to effectuate genocidal anti black violence across the globe as the projection of the settler sovereign self. This settler colony attempts to liquidate all remnants, all remnants of indigeneity abroad to transfer settler subjectivity across the globe. To maintain this international scheme, the settler colony must turn violence inward in the form of fashion and legitimize its own subjectivity. The impact of fascism producing black and native death as a means for its existence, driven by white resonant on the thirst for new frontiers to settle. This is offense for the permutation because anti fascist prices must contend with settler colonialism, structuring the social and the political the violence of fascism is brought home from the exceptional state of expansion under the frontier, the clearing and civilizing of indigenous people to make land right from settlement in the carceral continuum that has marked the black experience on this land along with the uh, clearing of the continent of indigenous people blindness is equated with an inherent status of enslavability and criminality marked for permanent solution from the social freedoms of the black body itself becomes a site of accumulation but settler colonialism is not just about indigeneity it also produces the erasure of black spatial relations that are the basis for collective back or black organizing so a decolonial framework for action that disrupts this human exceptionalism and the spatial batteries that separate uh, the indigenous group from black organizing by demonstrating how black bodies have become a site of spatial accumulation we are not a sociogenic uh, sociogenic intervention anarcho-indigenism is found in your critique of settler colonialism and white 
supremacy on the ground, forging alliances among native and black resistance, being drawn in relation with July for local and contextually rooted strategies of existing outside of genocidal anti black institutions, bringing about change through direct action, physical resistance, and confrontations with state power. That's all the net benefits of the permutations and ground in relationality allows for land to foster those lost relationships severed by settler colonials and property relations that sets and talks about. And we generate alliances needed for resistance to anti black settlement with their authors would agree is extremely good. There's no a presumption of offense that they haven't contested the actual solvency mechanism of ground relationality because of relation uh, because the foundation of, of land and ground relationality allows us to have better a strategy for the future by being contingent on each other's own relation. Now, uh, the Alfred stuff, this is going to be probably going to be a big thing in the two and our so I'll get ahead of it now. There are five arguments. The first is that this is not our theory. It says uh, that the, it says that the theory that indigenous people's sovereignty is limited to land is bad. And that's actually their argument and Setson's argument is second. It's just uh, not our theory because we inform our method with ground relationality, which solves uh, Alfred because uh, conversations are good. And there, uh, third, there's no uh, risk of violence because these conversations happen through ground relationality. The card even explains that if we had these conversations at the bottom of it said that we had more uh, women in leadership in these types of uh, movements and they would resolve uh, those kind of impacts, which ground relationality uniquely does. And at the worst, the uh, perm solves and for the worst case scenario, you can reject the card and we'll win that ground, ground relationality itself without an article indigenous is good and fifth reducing our argument uh, to uh, reducing our argument to like two lines in the one AC and reducing our entire theory that is probably bad and maintains indigenous erasure and erases all of the other indigenous scholars in the one AC two AC uh, let's go to the critique Role of ballot should be to vote for the team that produces the best strategy to combat structural violence. They need to have a practice for resolving their impacts. Ground of, ground of relationality is a better model of resistance. If we win that, they're theorizing the blindness is exceptional or bad, then you can vote for the uh, you can uh, you cannot vote for the alternative. Their exceptionalist reading of sovereignty misidentifies the sovereign possibility of the native from the settler master perspective. The native is void, and there is no possibility of humanity. It turns all of Sexton's arguments into a solvency deficit to the pick. That's Robinson in twenty. The white settler master occupies the space of the human, the black settler, the judge, and non-human between the two positions, the native separate in the world, and occupies the little position of happy humans, the reason for the happy human position, the native separate in the world, and the final of the understanding of members of native legend, and loss of the loss of sovereignty, and just to be very corporate, remain eligible in the human, uh, register the structural readjustment, water center, department, laws of the red, non eligible position, including the genocide of the loss, on the end of the loss of sovereignty, ultimately, the family recognize the nature of red life as a condition for being clear and prior priority is this, and they, if sovereignty existed out of colonial time, which is to say so, did not exist at all, only existed in, in order to be diminished, paired the native sovereignty was the creation to serve the notion of the native sovereignty as a void, non-native Americans, and native Americans have heard, emerged apart from a sovereignty of the ontological, unless we regard as non-human occupants. That's far as the settlers have said the Red Indian has never had sovereignty. The trip, uh, the trap for the which was involved in the discussion of the loss of native sovereignty, the respective practices never in question their capacity for counter chronographic coherence is the thing itself. Native uh, sovereignty is not and has never been the same thing as the sovereignty of the white settler uh, master. Any future, any future that preserves settler colonialism within civil society under governmental ontological and symbolic orders is not one it is one that by the very constitution of avoids any notion of native self-determination. The native called the native is not has never uh, been sovereign. Most first recognized they have been and always been, have been determined uh, by and through the project of the settler is no possibility of structural readjustment, only a relationship of our and antagonism. The uh, native can indeed never truly be as long as the uh, world of settler colonialism continues to be in. There's an animacy to said their analytic sovereignty asserts control over land as the condition for humanity, whereas the affirmative already understood land itself as agential in its own right. The goal of the one who sees in sovereignty over land, but sovereignty from the void. That means we seek relational attachments that are created by the land, not sovereign control over it. Our argument is that settler fashion was void of relation attachment, of relational attachment on uh, Turtle Island. And settler colonialism isn't, a jo uh, isn't just about indigeneity. I did that uh, work above, but our ground of relationality solves any of the offense and perm do the F and non mutually exclusive parts of the alternative contingent collaboration solves all the dissets. Ground of relationality, uh, uh, ground of relationality doesn't require an ancestral attachment to land, but rather uses land as a foundation to generate new forms of relationality. This fosters contingent collaboration among the black and indigenous people that ruptures settler geographies and generates more contextual strategies for resistance that's tucked in 14. The collective theorizing about land and place form which contingent collaboration does not move forward and separate uh, separate efforts to theorize black and indigenous relation to land or whether we mutually inform respect collaboration provided account for how others to theorize solidarity and requirement that the related version as a distinct uh, between various parts of the partnership between BLP research and the new and the research of this new new house is an example of the contingent collaboration, not because we use individual seek opposition or contrary uh, forms of justice, but rather in how our partnership and contingent collaboration because the colonial economy are a contingent collaboration points to the ways in the thresholds are not simply uh, places that are crossing from one side to the other. These are places that demand pause market in the passage and as pauses are necessary for the ethical and center of the collaboration. The collaboration to BLP research is this new new house research related to consciousness. Dissemination, the logical and ethical promises, premises that social science seem to offer, and intercommunal violence is resolved by the, uh, by the contingent collaboration arguments by recognizing incommensurable demands and mediating them with in the impasse. The generative work of having those conversations resolves, resolves most of the offense. The only reason that violence occurs now is because of lost relations to space and place, which now sever uh, coalitional potential. We have examples, struggles over the meaning to place that geographic dimensions to the practices of black reclamation. There are specific examples of black people being able to reclaim spatial relations and reclaim geographies that are evidence points to things like collaborating on the destruction of property ownership relations to begin working with and through the land instead of 
collaborating on the land. The shift in organization is a good uh, enough justification for the permutation because the alt license capacity materialized action outside of settler geographies tending to the land is a good example. Urban and, urban uh, gardening and providing a unique reparative relationship that suits the disparities between blackness and land. Those relationships have always existed and that doesn't want to recover them. And uh, Bible uh, and Bible trees also where uh, black people will uh, where would like surround the tree and uh, have a Bible study over and be able to reclaim black uh, spiritualities that slave owners would you necessarily chop down proves how relationships of land are necessarily uh, necessary in those conversations about blackness and granted relationality isn't bound to sovereignty based on notions of land and this refuse the totalizing frame of blackness is placeless this is a misreading and turns the alternatives capacity to resolve their impasse only the permutation allows us to live ethically with each other that zellers in 21. The complexity of black life through and beyond turn around as, uh, as robbed by slavery and black, uh, black uh, people's good term and resolution with the other together uh, offering refusal of convenient orthodox application frames the ongoing study of black people in the settler colonialism scenes. A uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual science of the law of mushroom illuminates black life as a break, a uh, more tender relation, only land based more than human existence as a black comments the inability to couple as uh, anti black larger produced by slavery and nested within revelation. The words are twofold first, the unsevered uh, uh, bounty of the gift and set in the offer place of the world guide. Uh, my future was a black comments in the ethic of ground of normativity capture the ethical engagement that form and form our understanding of right and wrong, how to get a uh, resolving conflict and how to best relate to the world and each other in the world in a healthy and sustainable manner. And I'm actually going to mark the card there a sustainable manner. Constructing blackness and nativeness as an exceptional or exclusive theories of power commits to the white settler master logic of self-possession, which desires to render the world entirely knowable and categorical. This uh, possessive logic reproduces the settler master's relation, which assures the fundability of blackness and vanishment and nativeness and to prevent uh, collaborative resistance. That's our bird evidence from the one AC perm. Do both. This debate should be a momentary suspension of exceptionalism. This avoids reducing colonization and racialization and the reverse. Only misguided exceptionalism prevents native studies and black studies from a fuller account of the mechanics of uh, this world. And this is the only piece of evidence that will be about all the evidence in the debate, especially the alternative that's Leroy and 16. Rather than the freemen solutions in the unfortunate bed to be remedied by the inclusion within the nation state indigenous black theory of criminal social and racial slavery, the very conditions of possibility, the hinge of inclusion, inclusion, both missing the violence and narrows any sense of possibility, how to be rejected, it's exclusive, claims are incompatible, each field reduces the other liberal multicultural needs theory, cannot fully account for the missingness of black and indigenous accounts with one another and with the US state. What if scholars suspend a such in order to consider the impact this work is self understanding the impact of slavery, religious form of racialization, colonialism that do not self support native slavery, but the realm of anti blindness and multicultural ones led to the one that still studies are anatomically in the face of settler colonialism, black racialization, or turning the same one settler ideology, not merely adjacent to it. The field theorizes black racialization in a way that precludes serious engagement within indigenous dispossession of blackness is exclusive uh, from the category of the human rights to a noble self the lost effort can only be framed as a lesser level of subordinate grammar while this may be generative theoretical claim that lends to sexual uh, conceptual coherence to sexual uh, sex sense and cycle of framing of slavery and anti-blackness it simply is not uh, historically accurate and the one I see Robinson card link, uh, link turns the critique and justifies the permutation because it says that fascism is defined by two fundamental axes, native elimination and anti-black violence. These two axes, while being somewhat incommensurable with another, also overlap and, of course, also intercept with the general parasit uh, par uh, parasitism of the imperialist countries in which the third world and other uh, colonized people world uh, why, which means that this a unique relation between fascism and how fascism is several relations to the land allows us to generate res a response to fascism, which we argue is the necessary condition for which anti-black and uh, anti-indigenous violence occurs, which is a good enough reason for you to justify voting for the permutation. And I'm going to finish that card I got. Her study on ongoing uh, on ongoing set of prices that guide black relationalities is, is a set of living prices in order to respond to harm and uh, violence non punitively Gunner normativity reproduces the uh, practices that are inherently informed by an intimate relation to place to forge uh, towards the study in the wild uh, modern mushrooms and move ever uh, countering the technologies that foster black dehumanization of native ownership of uh, black peoples and the genocide of native peoples in the new world. How to live in relation to other people's uh, other people and non human life forms is a profoundly non authoritarian, non dominating, non exploitative matter. Yeah, two areas. Um, definitely going to be like they're just wrong on the sovereignty decay and the permutation is going to solve it so yeah cool you good uh just give me one second yeah all right yeah okay uh, the one a, the two AC starts with large descriptions of black and native death that exists across all frontiers. Then you describe that in the context of both in and outside of what you described as land relationality. What does grounded relationality do to resolve anything or any of those structures? Yeah, so that was the last, that was like towards the bottom of the two AC. Grounded relationality allows for relations to emerge from from the realization that settler fascism has I, severed I, those I got, relationalities. I got the internal link part. Like, cool, relations emerge. But what do those relations do to challenge those systems, change yeah. those systems? Like you, the impact overview is so large that how do relations solve any of that? Oh, okay. Grant wants to take this. It, one, it, we think it's important that it helps us navigate the inevitabilities of violence. And the second is that we think it gives us capacities to build praxis that can overcome those structures okay. through okay. those relations. Wait, I, I want to ask a question about that. One, you've said that violence is inevitable. And the second is you can overcome them. Which one is it? Uh, violence is inevitable under settler fascism is our argument. Okay, well, yes. Then, my, then the question that I have still posits is, 
Yeah. What practice does the one EC create? Who organizes yeah. where? How do these sure. structures? So exist? those are the examples from the two AC. There are a couple of examples of how like black people and indigenous people can collaborate to form relationalities that would then challenge settler fascism. The one A, the two AC specifically listed three examples. The first one is walking the land, which describes uh a collaboration between the Black Land Project and some people that were uh, with uh, Eve Tuck. And basically they walked around the lake and they discussed how uh, they are interacting with the land, how land interacts with them, how that yeah. land was used for anti-black violence. I have other questions to ask. And you're oh, for sure. Stuff, yeah. But the Robinson evidence that you've listed says that it is that the exceptional reading of sovereignty is a deficit of the pick. What is the link to the Robinson evidence? the link your reading of sovereignty is exceptional. It doesn't view native nativity from the void. It views nativity from the position of being able to reclaim land. We argue that's bad. You, but you just said on case that it is able, you were, we are able to have practices that reclaim land. Yes, only if we land. only if we have the visions of sovereignty that the 1AC has produced. What is the you, distinction between that vision of sovereignty and the negatives? I just explained that. You think that native people are reclaimable under settler fascism. That's we do not fair. think that. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we. You know. literally uh, said that at the, the top of the one and C. The Tuck evidence says that settler colonialism isn't just about indigeneity. What yeah. else is it then about? I, how black spatial relations have been severed by settler colonialism. Well, one AC cross X. Zach asks, uh, "What is the relationship between blackness outside of settler colonialism?" And your answer was none. Then how does that reconcile the difference? I just explained that. Black spatial relations exist within the settler colonial theory. I don't understand like how, what how? you're quite you because settler colonialism requires the clearing of land, the clearing of space, and the clearing of sovereignty to be able to accumulate flesh. Two minutes. Okay.
sending out the document now. Um, just to make sure, is everybody here? All right. I am present. Uh, yeah. All right. And Rayvon, are you here? Yeah, I'm good. Sorry, I couldn't find my like. Yeah. No problem. Um, it'll be the critique, but before I speak, um, I would also like to say a few thank yous. Uh, if it's not too much time, I'll try to be brief. Um, first, I'd like to start out by uh, thanking my family, my mom and dad, who provide literally the conditions for me to be able to come to these tournaments. Uh, they care for me. They've provided everything I need. They fed me. They've talked to me on the phone when I'm having a lonely day. They've always been here to support me, even if they think that I sound incomprehensible when I'm talking uh, in debate. Uh, even if they don't get it, they're always checking in on tab room. And I really uh, think that it would be hard to sustain um, my motivation uh, for a debate without them. My sister, my aunts, uncles, my cousins, who always... Uh, even though they don't like to be that much, uh, they always are there to back me up. They're always there to support me. Uh, I would like to thank my teammates both here and not here. I think that it's something that I learned both in high school and in college is that part of being on a debate team is not just the debating part, but also the team part. I think that the people that are on the UT debate team that were on my high school team in Jesuit form a really close social network that uh, to me is a big part of the reason why I enjoy this activity so much. And so while, uh, while I won't uh, be able to name everybody here, I would, like to, uh, I would like to note that both for those who are here and not here, that you mean so much to me and uh, you mean so much to me. Uh, I would also like to thank coaches who have dedicated tireless hours to helping me prepare arguments, to helping research arguments, to telling me uh, when I'm talking, uh, when I'm talking too much or don't make sense. Uh, David Kilpatrick, Kevin Clark, Nico, Adam, Chris Randall, Michael Barlow. Uh, I'd like to uh, also uh, shout out my former partner, Pia, who's not only my former partner, but has also helped uh, cut some cards, research arguments uh, to help, uh, to help Ed and I, as well as some other members of the team uh, this year succeed. Um, I would like to thank Het. This kid's amazing. Uh, I think that Het, to be, uh, to be honest, I, I don't have uh, quite the words to express my gratefulness. It's been a really rough year uh, debate wise for me uh, because it's on Zoom and everything. And at every point you've kind of just, I know that you've talked about me being there for you. You've been there all the time. Even when I'm like, I've got all this stuff going on. You're there, you're theorizing what we're gonna do on the negative. You're super flexible about what we're gonna do. You're amazing your future is looking really bright. I'm really, uh, I really wanna thank you for that. Uh, I would like to uh, thank the current director of debate, Brendan Mankey, also the coach uh, who has helped, uh, who has helped all of these theorizations that y'all hear in these debate, uh, here in these debates. I would like to thank the director of speech who helped make this possible, Randy Cox. I'd like to thank the former director of debate, Joel Rollins, who welcomed me onto the team when I was, uh, when I was first uh, coming onto the team as a freshman. I'd like to thank the Moody College staff and faculty who made this all possible from the communications office staff, uh, Jennifer uh, Bedencourt, Lisa Mosley, and Saul Palarmo, who always were uh, willing to give me the key to open the squad room whenever it was locked and I was trying to get in on, uh, and I was trying to get in after classes uh, got out. Give me any Education Studies Department Chair, Dr. Craig Scott, Dean of, uh, Dean of the Moody College, Dr. Jay Bernhardt. And I would also like to thank the, uh, I would also like to thank the judges and competitors in the debate community. 
Y'all are a big part of the reason why I love to be. While I do really enjoy, uh, as a lot of y'all know, a lot of the theoretical components of debate, a lot of the research, a lot of the questions that we pursue in debate, to be honest, it wouldn't be worth it if it wasn't for the relations that I've been able to build with y'all through that process of theorizing. This, I especially want to shout out, uh, as Pet did, uh, Asia and Julian, y'all, uh, especially before this debate, as it's my last uh, debate as a competitor, uh, have reminded me that what is important about debate is not necessarily the wins and losses, but rather the relations that we form along the way the theorizations that we're able to have. Uh, and lastly, uh, I promised Pia that I would shout out um, Scott Harris for uh, continuing to push me to further develop and understand argumentation, even though I was post-rounding him and was uh, very clearly wrong about my post-rounding. Um, I know I haven't named everybody who meant, uh, who's meant something to me or has been important to me. Uh, know that if I didn't name you explicitly, that is not uh, because I don't think that you're important to me. I'm serious when I say that as a whole, this community is part of what keeps me going despite not get, uh, despite like everything uh, that makes me not want to, uh, makes me not want to keep pushing hard to work in debate or to work in school. Y'all really give me the energy that I need to participate in these, uh, in these forms and activities that I think have been uh, so influential uh, in my life. And so uh, for all that, I would like to say thank you. Um, with all that said, um, is everybody ready for the two and C? All right. Always already. Anti-blackness is the fundamental antagonism that coheres modernity, civil society, the notion of nation states, the category of the human can only be cohered by either opposition to the radical and coherence of the slave as deracinated, unsovereign property outside the analytic alienation and exploitation. Blackness is structured through accumulation and fungibility, constituted through the reduction of African subjects to fungible shadow on the middle patches that remains a condition for cohering the world in the afterlife of slavery. They have argument zero for how blackness could demonstrate any form of sovereign capacity, whether Western or indigenous, and they've conceded our sex, uh, sex and evidence's argument that there are minutes to the structure of humanity is a prerequisite to sovereignty. The actual next question that you must answer is, does your ballot side with sovereign subjectivity and grounded relationality or the unsovereign anti-human position of blackness prefer it because our sex and evidence says radical politics must begin on the highest plane of theorization possible or else we'll break Western integration tactics like the high, uh, like the uh, uh, like the one AC, uh, uh, which strives for nothing more than temporary inclusion of natives in the academy. It's, only, it's the only way to breach the divide between the living and the dead. Now, their uh, their uh, role of ballot argument will develop the framework argument uh, more largely in the one in our, however, their conceptual, uh, their, uh, their, uh, there's a consensus add to their conceptualization of organizations to solve structural violence. Black people never consider to return to the lynching tree. The absence endorsement of grounded relationality is a coercive practice of put blackness to work in the name of re indigenization. That's what it's in to him. And 17, uh, consensus never considered to relevant slave relations. And society comes to be the rubbery history of violence, slave relations, the violent history of the, uh, of the slave relations, traumatic and painful violence against the slaves has no irrational solidarity here. Does not mean reciprocity. There is, uh, there is only more complicated one. Finds three more weapons to share struggle, strategic alliance, coabitation alongside of been a history of uh, pervasive anti black racism. So, scholars suggest, uh, suggest there is ground for, uh, for a black native solidarity. The present argument is forwarded that solidarity can be retrieved from the past and refashioned in black native solidarity can be founded on certain issues. World views, practices, and kinship structures and prerequisite for black people to move it free and uh, re indigenization. The problems and evidence will be uh, answered more explicitly, uh, will be answered more explicitly in the one in our however, the theorizations of, uh, of, gr of grounded relationality are necessarily parasitic and inessential to the grammar of the slave. Uh, uh, of the, uh, of the slave, all impact, uh, all internal link turn, their animus, uh, their animacy to sad, uh, 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 or impact turn their animacy to sad. Their, uh, their theorization of animacy, uh, animacy of land is only conceptualized through violent relation, uh, relation to black folks. That was demonstrated in the cross examination of the one I see when I asked, what is the relationship of black, uh, 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 black folks to land where, uh, black, uh, where black folks were lynched, or what is, really, uh, or, or how do you explain, uh, how do you explain how black folks with a relation to, uh, to, uh, to land, to sovereign, uh, to sovereignty are still able to, uh, are still able to be subject to gratuitous violence. Anti-blackness is the weather, it's the climate. Anti-blackness formulates the conditions of the land itself. They're going, uh, they, they assume that there are black geographies uh, uh, per their talking guest card, uh, uh, which said are made into, uh, which says that in 
order to be made into property black people must remain landless, which is just not true because there's black and indigenous folks in Africa who are still subject to, uh, to, uh, to gratuitous violence and the analytic of fungibility and, uh, and accumulation rather than exploitation and labor. Every, uh, everyone has a relationship to the land, but that doesn't protect black folks from the gratuity of anti-blackness. Louis Gates Jr.'s access to land and property didn't protect them from uh, violence, nor Breonna Taylor, because they were both uh, they were both shot in their homes. They pathologize black people who get killed in their own homes and on their own lands. Their theory of violence is black people in the position of the unthought. All of their examples of black people having a positive relationship to the land is based in, uh, in contingency, i.e. black people are able to identify specific contingent instances where they found relief or, rest, uh, or, or respite. However, that, uh, uh, however, understanding that as black folks' relationship, uh, relationship to land is a, romantic, uh, is a romanticization of black social life. Our argument is that uh, blackness does not have social life, uh, but it is uh, live within the context of social death, i.e. their explicit focus on social life at the cost of social death. I don't know why my timer went off. Uh, does anybody have time? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, their uh, their uh, their their romanticization of uh, their romanticization of anti white uh, uh, of uh, anti white violence conspiracy on the uh, on the government of the enslaved and, re uh, and renders the positionality of the slave to the position of the unthought because it's going to only theorize violence in terms of contingency rather than gratuitous violence. Remember that Wilderson at fourteen evidence from the one and see that black uh, that blackness does not have a psychological grounding wire to explain it, uh, 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 to, uh, to explain its suffering because it's ontological rather than contingent. While the uh, 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 while the uh, while the native be able to, uh, 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 while the native is able to say the loss of uh, uh, loss of sovereignty is something that can be restored. Uh, uh, is something that can be restored by a, a groundless, uh, by, uh, by a grounded relationality that is uh, that is an impossibility for the slave. And second, uh, second is that this animacy does not bruise our uh, arc of redemption. Like they see, uh, they seek a return to agency that is necessary. Paras uh, parasitic on the slaves, lack of access, uh, uh, lack of access to agency in the first place. They say that solar colonialism produces the condition of anti blackness. However, this is uh, this is only understandable through a contingent focus. That's a separate question. The absurdization of land cannot account for the gratuitous nature of anti black. Uh, 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 anti black violence and their theorization of anti black violence is one of a ne uh, neoliberal mode of inclusion whereby they fold anti black gratuitous violence into the contingent frame of settler, uh, settler uh, colonialism, which always moves the positionality of the slave to the position of the unthought, i.e., where we do not have a grammar to articulate uh, to articulate the uh, uh, fundamental uh, fundamentally race nation and not. Uh, not on sovereignty of the slave, the uh, the permutation they don't get one. This is the question of competing theoretical paradigms of description. That means you should refuse to compromise because they just uh, skirt negra uh, negling ground, which radicalizes political strategies in favor of liberalism. They still link inner severance or interest, which is a voting issue for uh, for, neg uh, for negative uh, for negative ground because we have to be able to uh, uh, we have to be able to contest them. The AF is the apex. And de radicalization in native studies and indigenous movements are sex and evidence that identifies two distinct antagonistic and mutually exclusive grammars of suffering available to indigenous politics, sovereignty, and genocide. Indigeneity is situated between the poles of recognition and disappearance. Recognition entails not only anti black coalition building, but the permanent erasure of native being through assimilation, several colonial technologies that upgraded themselves from relying on overt genocidal acts of force to encouraging indigenous radicals to coalesce with their own destruction. The one he sees claims of sovereignty is just uh, uh, just outside of pseudo radicalism that renders indigenous people's uh, uh, clientele of, uh, uh, of civil society. This is why material manifestations. The one he sees demand are left unclear. I don't know more. Stands in the way of railroads in Canada. The Red Power movement takes over government buildings. They read some card. Uh, they read some cards and talked to us for a few minutes, which is in practice. Our section evidence describes this as the de-escalation of antagonism to conflict, which impedes a politics of abolition by making recourse to the safe to, uh, to, the, sa uh, to the safe terrain of the uh, uh, to the safe uh, to the safe terrain uh, safe terrain of the imaginary. They said that. Uh, they said that. Uh, they said that. Uh, they said that Within the uh, within the settler master paradigm that uh, uh, that the native is never able to be incorporated into the category of the human, however, our sex and evidence assumes all of their sovereignty, uh, uh, even if they win that redness is antagonistic to whiteness. That is not answer our fundamental argument that blackness is still antagonistic to redness, even if they uh, even within both antagonistic positionalities, their framework uh, their framework recycles use uh, the uh, the roots of analogy by equating the uh, the the position uh, the uh, the positionality uh, uh, the positionality of the, uh, 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 of, uh, of indigeneity into the category uh, into the category of the slave, but that's not true because the ability of the uh, uh, because the ability of the native to re uh, to reclaim uh, notion, uh, a notion, uh, notion of sovereignty via gr uh, grounded relationality is necessarily parasitic on the fundamental inability of the slave to, uh, to reclaim that via all of the examples and criticism of the Black Land Project that I've done above. The R6 and evidence also assumes their sovereignty distinctions. They are not the link term, but rather the link. Even the move away from land as property towards land as relational agency still arrives back into an anti black grammar of suffering, which is why they cannot explain and why black folks should positively endorse relationship to the land when that real uh, agential capacity of the land is always framed in a violent uh, violent relation towards uh, 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 towards black folks. Uh, they, uh, they 
they made a couple of arguments about why you should refuse blackness as totalizing het will handle this more specifically in the uh, in the one and r i'll do some more specific uh, i'll do some more specific link analysis specifically on their uh, condition that uh, colonialism uh, precedes slavery here's a quick history lesson anti blackness is historically prior and essential to the formation of humanity at best settlerism was an important but in a such a side effect colonization may have begun in 1492 but shadow slavery was kickstarted by the portuguese slavers half a century early in 1441 that historically have matters because europeans use that initial encounter on the iberian peninsula to establish the ontological rubric of humanity by endowing the human with every subjective characteristic they deprived from black and schools where american conquest had already been well tested by landfall and absence into that historical paradigm shift the ass politics are doomed to error replication this also generates an ethical difference between our impacts and theirs. While indigenous populations gave the Spanish pause, there was no hesitation in regardless of uh, in regards to blackness because blackness was rendered to the positionality of the unthought and posed no ethical and uh, no ethical dilemma for the, the civil society. That's why Bartolome de la Casas, the so-called father of American human rights, advocated that natives should be free from slavery and replaced with black people. The condition the possibility for debate over the alleged sovereignty of indigeneity is thus already parasitic on the moral side lining of uh, black uh, black claims to freedom. This establishes a sequencing claim for how you evaluate impact. Civil society is not simply a political structure, but a, rep a repetitious system of violence rendered coherent, uh, coherent solely through its capacity to push blackness outside of political and social community, which means that their claims towards reclaiming social community, even if it's outside the notion of the nation state, is still parasitic on blackness because the, the non-sovereignty of blackness precludes even out, uh, relationality outside the nation state. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. So you explained uh, a, a example of the Spanish on this land. Um, why were the Spanish here? Uh, the argument is that the well, so historically, the Spanish uh, were trying to go to, uh, were trying to find a route around uh, Africa to get to India without having to uh, go through Eastern Europe. For the, sure. the the ship, however ended up in North America, uh, the ship power ended up in North America because they didn't understand currents at the time. The argument- So why'd they stay? Though, why did they stay? Yeah. The argument is that the argument is that slavery provided, uh, provided the conditions, i.e. the fungible uh, bodies that uh, allowed for the land to be take, uh, taken and turned into a site of production of uh, sure. uh, production of capital. So how is the argument, oh, the argument that you're going uh, the argument that you're going to go for about the uh, about the removal of so uh, the removal of sovereignty through the genocide of native uh, of native folks is only possible through the fungibility of the slave that created the material conditions for that project in the right. How did the slave become fungible? We think that the slave became fungible through the uh, through the uh, through the process of the slave trade, i.e., the the way in which. Why did the slave trade happen? We think that the slave uh, we think that the slave trade happened because in order to establish a conception of humanity, Europe defined itself in oppos in opposition to African subjects and reduced them to uh, mere shadow. So All our right, argument cool. is that ontological insecurity is a uh, is a condition of the psyche, in that the way in which anti blackness become uh, and the way in which anti blackness comes to be in the first place is because in dealing with that uh, ontological insecurity, uh, European powers who established modernity through the formation of the U.S. and then later process right, of globalization. Cool. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. I, I get I, I get that. Um, the uh, just real quick, how do you feel about land? What does land mean to you? So how I feel about land is inconsequential to this debate because just a question. Our, argument, our argument is that the way in which blackness is related to land is, in, uh, is a paradigmatic capacity, which is not uh, related to contingency. Okay, I'm not, I'm not asking about this debate. I feel about I'm, land given my experience. I'm not, I'm not asking about this debate. I just like, well, what, is, this, what is land to you? This, this is land agential to you? This, this this is the question of this debate. All right, sure, whatever. I'll move on. That land's agential capacity is only possible through the radical deracination and non-sovereignty. I, of the I understand state. what the debate is about. Affirmation that we should uh, that we should. Uh, I have one more question. So the property relations of land is one that is parasitic on the slave. Sure, I understand the debate, but you said that uh, property relations being severed is anti-black. Why? That property relations. Yeah, you said you said turning. You said you said shifting from land as property relations to land as agential as anti-black. Why are yes, severing property relations bad? Only, that agency can only be realized by the fundamental incapacity not of my question. to reclaim agency. Uh, what in our set? I'm gonna give people a second to pull it up, and then I'll give you. Thumbs 
things. The order will be framework, like the world about stuff, uh, the alternative debate proper, and at the end, I will answer the Robinson stuff. And if I have time, the last argument will be case. Cool. Grant, you good? Okay, perfect, perfect. I'll start in 10 seconds if no one says anything. Freiburg demanded the semantic field is not insulated from the protocols of anti blackness, but it's in fact complicit in the policing of black life that makes any move to redemption at the level of affect, discourse, linguistic, or semi autic complicit in anti blackness. You should refuse the problem solving the binary inevitably posed by the one error because we have a picture in the frame analysis. You should not understand the criticism in our traditional sense, but a firm agreement about the scriptures of the world. You frame space through lots of inverse proportions. How radical one is, it's only determined by how one with radical one theorizes that the world about is to vote for the team with the best theoretical lexicon to understand anti blackness. You should evaluate the one to see as a piece of scholarship, but not a model for tech or organizing. I'll answer their world about here. One, you don't get to say the world about is to resolve structural violence and Anti blackness via settler colonialism debate. Every argument for the truth proves anti blackness is the precondition for understanding the grammar of settler colonialism in the first place. The truth is dropped. Argument that blackness constitutes the measuring stick that allows individual inhabiting to have structural position to articulate their suffering. Blackness is the site of non ontology who hears any other conception of violence. Yes, endorsement of particular tactics like non participation, native anarchy, and grounded relationality ratchet down the scale of destruction from the structure to the contingent, which puts a target on the blacks of black people, blah, on the backs of black people to the world about it. It's itself a ruse of analogy to assume blackness can be reg registered to a chain of equivalencies alongside. Nativeness within the category of structural violence reveals the slippage whereby non blacks can place themselves at the suffering alongside blackness and struggle against settler colonialism. Our framework is that the argument is rather that black people should ha already have a surplus of plans to combat anti blackness. What they need is the grammar of suffering, section and intent. What does it mean to suffer to address such as to address such as to discard the impatience that envelops intellectual stuff that too much pressuring about plans? If we surplus our plans, we do not need to have a language, much less political culture that adequately articulates the various commodity and positions that we hear of suffering and its fullest sense not only is pain, but it's also which black people must bear uniquely and singularly. There's an equilibrium to set to their interpretation to make operates through tripartite redemptive arc whereby social death is marked as a moment to disequilibrium. Social life prior to transgression is marked by equilibrium. The app is marked is marked as a return to equilibrium that completes an arc to move to restore equilibrium. It's only made possible by forcing blackness to undergo structural adjustment, which has the external Back to maximum activity, i.e., their arguments that you should be able to solve structural violence in SESPO. That means you should not evaluate the app on the basis of whether a method is valuable, but how the insertion of their research implicates their relations with blue blackness or any argument on behalf of the one ear about how our debate has the capacity to do anything more. The analyze black suffering illustrates a flinch in their analysis. The assumption that blackness could ever be disentangled from slavery is exactly what we have impact on the framing issue is that there exists no corner of the world that is insulated from protocols of anti black policing. A framing issue for valuing this debate is that even if we lose the ontology debate proper or that things can change, get better, etc., via the permutation, every link independently terms. The case and implicates outsolvency. Our link arguments do not have to be understood with the scheme of an unchanging restoration of anti blackness. And apology would suggest, but the critique of the ass orientation to one that the link described is pre premised on a historical reading of anti blackness within space. You should refuse the one error's inevitable ethical blackmail to uplift as an emancipation are necessary and good. This is a rhetorical tool that overvalued to redemptive feelings while offering nothing to show which will impact turned by the first two EC practice. Standard on the practice said, This is our parasitism. They said their model of debate generates incentives for non black people to parasitically claim the benefits of the movement that they do not participate in, like the one EC's listing of the black radical tradition as reasons to prefer their method, i.e. two AC prospects when they list a bunch of movements that they do not contribute to, do not solve, nor scale up to do. The alternative debate proper is a refusal of the one AC search for a coherent vocabulary to describe a decolonial pedagogy of the university at this very infrastructure for such a grammar can only rely on the rules of analogy to structure onto positions of blackness or turn of ask you to radically passivity through an unflinching political ontology of pessimism that refuses their ability to utilize indigeneity as a comparative metric to black experience and one that maintains a fidelity to slave structure subordination and move from experience to structure which is better able to access the way that their evidence describes revealing the blood soaked in land on which we stand the alternative theorization for battle oh, for the debate rises to a level of theory at a higher level of restriction that begins at the end of the unsovereignty of the slave if we want our Top level framing, it means that the app is a safety valve, a, a psychological grounding wire for the master seller, where it's a possibility of an ethical position for sellers to escape route for recognizing the magnitude of the complicity and anti finds that they secure rather than crack the seller's psyche to framing our shoes for the alternative and prove that we solve the entire the app first. There's a distinction between genocide and sovereignty. Bracket all their offense about how we don't have methods for indigenous people. Yes, we do. This is our answer to the Leroy evidence using genocide as an analytic to theorize indigeneity alongside blackness. This is one that fractures the conceptual scheme and will not link to the impact on genocide. is a modality that's beyond redress, which is of a notion of gratuity upon likeness that prevents any argument of redemption because it doesn't get bullets to the Western notion of sovereign uh, position and forces recognition of models of violence that which exceed treaty making the app and the permutation falls short of this shoehorning indigenous sovereignty. 
Nazi or different distinctions to society, which magnifies all or disavow, disavow offenses to proven by the Twinsy. And one of our examples, second, sovereignty is a modality in relation to blackness that pursues incorporation, even if it is through refusing Western notions of possession. This is our last piece of sex and evidence. The one I see is a mode of reach that assumes one can move back to sovereignty in an ethical manner. This means that they can theorize sovereignty for which is that of the subject, but the object, the key here all is that their link defense will be the not about a not our sovereignty, i.e. when the Robinson evidence says, quote, native sovereignty is not and never has been the same thing as the sovereignty for the white settler master, unquote. This is that sovereignty for natives requiring an imposition of land side of conditions, subjectivity to lose where blackness is constituted not by the loss, but the absence of such a loss of the capacity to experience loss. This is precisely how illogical fugitive indigenous practices get appropriated by the academy as well. Sovereignty focus manifests in native forms of inclusion, such as Cherokee expulsion of the freedmen and Choctaw's disenfranchisement of black members in 1883. It also cuts corruption on the part of the U.S. government, which is why the Supreme Court was able to wholly erode Dred Scott's legal standing under the jurisdiction of the black uh, political community uh, was an oxymoron while referencing indigenous governing structures. The point of contrast, the paradigmatic uh, posturing of Dred Scott as a black subsumed by his bodily personhood rendered him unsovereign through a rep repetitious compulsion and that gratuitous finds on him to materially push him out of the colonial stress. They cannot win. This is not our sovereignty. Our evidence is extraordinarily explicit that their sovereignty as such presupposes a politics of endurance and survivalism that runs around confronting the slavist of embodiness. The last thing I will extend here is uh, the answer to uh, the answer to the Robinson evidence. Their attempt to equivocate settler colonialism and blackness can only ratchet down the scales of obstruction to sociological analysis within IT. I have found settler colonialism and indigenous studies are grappling with the anti-blackness day or using the racial slavery and settler colonialism constitute a dialectical revolution. Day said meta function of the silence of black studies say analysis is critical or treatment of slavery and anti-blackness and settler colonialism studies and indigenous studies that have to balance the analytics of slavery and settler colonialism and king letters to elucidate how critical approaches to content with the indigenous people have long been in features of the examination of slavery and black studies. They think these approaches may be generative at the sociological level with their potential for productive engagement in the content of the reality paradox that I do not bend well. Uh, either one paradigm can do us to circle prevail or the other or the sincere effort to balance both cannot go beyond the merely descriptive consciousness only one can have it both ways. Card at waves, last sentence. There's like six words left. We have 
Okay, we've got 240 left. Uh, there are no cards. It's the case and then the K. I don't know if everyone's here. Looks like it. Okay. Okay. Looks like that's everyone. Uh, hope I'm not missing anyone. Okay. Vote affirmative. Case outweighs. Fascism doesn't come out of the block's mouth, which means it's impossible for them to know their arguments. The Robinson evidence assumes all of their ontology warrants, but says fascism makes it worse, which means there's only a question of our uh, of the ways in which we relate to sol to solving the coming structures of fascism, which our praxis is necessary for. They uh, that also means that we have a better understanding of structures because the textures that fascism adds means that we meet their framework argument better than they do, and, uh, and that's sufficient for their structures claim. Go to the role of the ballot. We win under their framework. All of our offense is criticisms of their theories of power and structures of violence. Three uh, arguments here. The first is uh, all of their uh, link arguments are dependent upon three things that we've impact turned. The first is exceptionalism. You should suspend it in both black and indigenous studies and psychiatry because they participate in that, on, uh, uh, that frame by, at every level because it requires slavery to be necessary to understand it as a rad radically antagonistic form of violence that creates the condition of the world that means that native colonization must be relegated to a lesser concern in a junior partner in a form of liberal multiculturalism which invests in indigenous vanishment. The Leroy evidence is about all of the Sexton evidence that they've read in this debate. It says that Sexton is wrong because it disavows the uh, sort of histories of violence and colonization and the messiness that occurs within the, the encounters of black and indigenous geographies, which is something that only we have a theorization of. Yes, violence is in, uh, yes, violence and intercommunal violence happens, but how do we navigate it? We should, uh, expanding exceptionalism is one mechanism of doing that it solves the, the, the it solves the, those particular encounters uh, the second is it requires you to infer affirm black on geography or talk at all evidence criticizes that frame and says that that is one of the ways in which it maintains the anti-black violence of the world and produces black folk as property which means their analytic turns itself it also means grounded relationality is try or die for producing black geographies that can mean something and three is they understand uh, indigenous violence is contingent which mystifies genocide there is also a conflation of gen of sovereignty and genocide which is a false distinction the robinson evidence says that uh, the clearing and civilization are constitutive both land and elimination are ways in which genocide operates the robinson evidence describes this as a void of native sovereignty they are reinvested in this vo in this avoiding of indigenous life through the through the structures of their link arguments because they require you to invest in uh, and, and, and grafting and scripting uh, westphalian notions of sovereignty and forms of uh, relational control uh, and uh, and sovereign subjecthood onto native life, which is itself a form of genocidal erasure that turns the uh, the the, the, criti the the turns the criticism. It means it's a try or die argument for the alternative. It also frames all of the link arguments because all of them require you to invest in this form of sovereignty. It's also an impact turn to the one in our pick argument because the ge genocide was always already the one EC. The one EC always already posited a relationship between black. And and native genocide is the mechanisms of producing the world, which is exactly our argument. The to and see Wilderson evidence, the lynching tree is inevitable, which means the question of navigation of those structures. Grounded relationality solves it because it allows us to come to terms with those textures and histories of violence. Land will inevitably be marked by genocide after all of the settler shit that has occurred on it, which makes the or all of the settler master shit that has occurred on it, which makes it only a question of how we relate to those things, which is something that grounded relationality solves. They've considered numerous examples, struggles over meaning of place, and 
geographic dimensions. It produces particular attachments for black people across land that result in the form of black spirituality and energy that they are, uh, that, that they always necessarily, that they necessarily solve all of the Bible tree and examples are ways in which uh, the b- black place making must be destroyed in order for the, uh, in order for the slave to be made fungible, which means we have an in- key internal link of contesting that through spirituality. They've also conceded one particular permutation. The tuck evidence describes contingent collaboration as a good mechanism of violence. It doesn't mean that we always get along or we always relate to one another in a positive way, but rather there could be contingent relationships that are good. That turns their consent to said because black people always already have the choice whether or not to engage in those things. They permutation arguments. It's not it's not severance. It was always about uh, bla- black land relations and sovereignty. We're not a desire to articulate a uh, bla- 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 black life because the one EC was always already that discussion. Structural analytics can be combined, which is a uh, good thing because it gives us a fuller co- account of the phenomena that the Leroy evidence says is necessary to produce vi- uh, d- to resolve violence. All of their uh, examples in the one and R, uh, such as blood quantum, etc., are all ways that prove our Leroy argument because it proves that uh, mechanisms of an anti-indigenous violence such as blood quantum, etc., are all then mobilized and used against black and black native people, which is something that only that we navigate, and they would necessarily write out that form of violence from an analysis of politics, which is bad. Rounded, re- grounded relationality saw uh, also. One other thing on the framework argument, we can win under theirs, but they can't win under ours. Praxis is a good thing to develop. We need a strategy to contest fascism. Only grounded relationality through anarcho and indigeneity is something that can resolve that for, for both native and black people, which is something that I don't think they've answered in this debate, which means it's just a question, of, which means we're not parasitic at the question of uh, at the question of scale or anything else, because the 1EC was always already attuned to those questions. The sovereign distinction of land agency as being anti-black is exactly the conditions that maintain black placelessness as a mechanism of anti-blackness in the squo. That's the uh, Zeller evidence, which cites numerous examples that we've talked about, about things like walking the land, etc. are all moments of relationality that disprove the totalizing thesis of the alternative. They have to win every instance of indigenous enunciations or indigenous demands are bad, which is genocidal, which means it's a, ca- which means it's a double bind for the two and R. We have um, 56.
Uh, it's going to be the K. Start with a little overview, do the link, then move on to framework. Uh, just expanded my Zoom window so I can see everyone. Uh, everyone good? Awesome. They're engaged in a classic arc of redemption, which leaves Black people in a structural position of the unthought. Coercively say that if Black people aren't in coalition, then it's try or die for the affirmative. You should choose that for relationality. You should choose that for the human. You should choose death for the world. If you feel uncomfortable doing that, there are an unconscious investment in antibodies, which you should reject all of their arguments about how the affirmative, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the alternative necessitates genocide for indigenous folks is not true in the uh, is not true in the contingent sense, but rather true in a paradigmatic sense, i.e. Uh, 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 delving into the uh, into the radical dawn, sovereignty, and de-race nation of the slave it's necessary to access any conditions uh, of freedom, which is uh, which is warrant dropped from uh, dropped from the uh, dropped from the block in the one AR. The one ACs supposedly should use the sovereignty is merely addressed by that conscious raising all other neatly tied all together. Sovereignty back to the easy to fix nature is exactly why it will do extreme skepticism. Uh, are uh, are uh, sex and evidence impact turns to of partnership? Their sovereignty focuses on uh, and derives from a human scholarly positioning. The endpoint of meditation on native trauma is the suturing of uh, uh, structurally adjusted indigenous population. Right for assimilation, this occurs uh, both through active Illusion to release brownies of indigenous sovereignty, which manifests in native forms of solutions such as hierarchy, expulsion of freedmen, and the charges disenfranchisement of black members and political option, i.e., how the denial of dress class legal standing was explicitly contrasted to indigenous governing structures. The reduction of black being to ge uh, ge uh, genealogical isolation, robs of time space, transformative capacity, which makes it impossible for blackness to access self determination or consensual relation to land. They have dropped the one in our framing argument that our argument is not simply that black people experience loss in relation to land, but that they experience a loss of the capacity to experience loss in and of itself. This is why every to get on the behalf of the app assumes a moment of recuperation that is not possible for the slave. They cannot win on not our sovereignty. Our evidence is explicitly talking about how sovereignty of the native uh, uh, the native gains distances from blackness, which replicates the master slave dialect to demonstrate by how Choctaw and Chickasaw maintain, uh, maintain to sure slavery. This is illustrated by the text of the 2AC anime dis uh, animacy dissab, which says the goal of the 1AC isn't sovereignty over land, but sovereignty uh, from the void. Unquote. Our argument is that blackness constitutes the position of that void, which gives any conception of native vitality. Uh, it's coherent. They've also dropped all of the uh, all of the examples of how blackness is in uh, how blackness is in a uh, structurally violent relationship to land. They dropped that black indigenous folks in, Af uh, in Africa are still uh, positioned and structured by uh, uh, structured by gratu uh, gratuitous violence. Are the examples of, uh, of Gates and Breonna Taylor who were shot in their homes demonstrates that blackness uh, uh, demonstrates uh, demonstrate that access to land or relation uh, relationality to land is insufficient to grant, uh, uh, is insufficient to solve the gratuitous violence by which uh, black uh, uh, black folks are uh, uh, black folks are positioned, which means that their calls for um, uh, 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 their calls for granted normativity as a Sovereignty mechanism for anti violence only leaves blackness in the position of the unthought by prioritizing decolonization at the expense of focusing on blackness, which is fundamentally non sovereign and therefore prevents uh, and therefore prevents relationality of the uh, of the land being a possibility of liberation. The role of the ballot is to the the best theoretical lexicon for understanding anti uh, anti blackness. Their role of the ballot is itself a ruse of analogy to assume that blackness can be relegated to, uh, to its chain of equivalence alongside native uh, nativeness within the category of structural violence reveals a slippage whereby non blacks can place themselves in their suffering alongside blackness in the struggle against settler colonialism extend the sex and evidence and in, in internal insurance all of their uh, all of their crimes about fascism because we don't need more plans all of their arguments about fascism assume that we should be focused on uh, uh, solving modes of contingent violence while they drop the argument that sexton says that uh, uh, absent a uh, uh, absent a grammar to explain the uh, uh, to explain the paradigmatic suffering of blackness we will always uh, will always just reconstitute blackness in a new form despite contingent gains which is also the romanticism just that, uh, just that was dropped from the uh, negative like that all of their examples of uh, black, uh, black contingent resistance are romanticizing black social life at the expense of focusing on social death, but only makes their impacts inevitable because absent sol uh, solving or providing a grammar to, uh, to understand uh, uh, gratuitous black suffering, it will uh, fascism will always reconstitute itself, which means that if we run any risk of a link, you vote, ne uh, you vote negative because reconstitution of anti-blackness makes, um, uh, uh, makes anti-native uh, 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 anti uh, uh, anti genocide inevitable. The alternative, the one AR has zero else. They dropped to the all serves case, the very specific sovereignty link is severely mishandled. We have an external impact that they cannot capture and they drop the ball on framework so they can't go for materiality as often. They're gonna start with the alternative. The alternative endorses a string of negations that unsettled when he sees residual attachment to the order of humanism. This should be framed by the sex and evidence. That's mostly our understanding of land and archival reclamation of, uh, of the alter, uh, of the alter
uh, recl uh, reclamation the alternative wars Wagner says avoid a place in system on sovereignty that rumps very coherent settler master apparatus they have conceded that this is the ultimate radicalization of their project they cannot weigh the ass as a decide when we push it to its maximum limit through an understanding that the problem isn't seller v native or theoretical mis uh, miscrypting versus historical rearticulation is a question of the human versus the non-human in the world versus the worldless net uh, worldless meaning only our refusal corrodes the settler subject voting negative radicalizes any chance of decolonization because they have conceded the black abolition is already a project of complete disorder that includes an analysis of settlement but radicalizes it to center the figure of the unsovereign, beginning with this position that is structured to the complete absence of possession is the only way to lead to our relationship to land or to each other that is not parasitic on blackness. They draw that there's a distinction between black uh, genocide and sovereignty. This solves their legal evidence about not accounting for indigenous tactics. Genocide theorizes beyond, redre uh, beyond redress, which uh, prevents any move towards redemption because it doesn't get folded into Western notions of sovereign perception. The permutation they draw, uh, they draw this, is uh, this, is a, this isn't a competition between methods, but rather a competition between different theorizations of power, which means that if we win any link to either theories of power is parasitic upon uh, blackness at paradigmatic level to decide, uh, decide to the permutation. It means that you should prefer the alternative alone. There's also two conceded dissents to the perm. First, the consent to statics in the Wilderson assuming evidence is functionally dropping an impact towards everything to the answer that black relations to the land or uh, a, 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 a coalition, uh, coalition based upon a uh, condition, uh, condition of consent. But our Wilderson assuming evidence, which was dropped, uh, uh, says that that consent is uh, structurally not possible to uh, uh, possible to slave. Second, is the sociology to statics in the woods evidence. Uh, there, uh, there are two ways blackness alongside. Uh, 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 native uh, nativeness and decolonization it only requires a focus on decolonization their move to say that we shouldn't essentialize one of the other always essentializes decolonization as a thing that we should pursue at the expense of blackness which proves the permutation is impossible All right, well, in perfect fashion, our stand uh, fell apart um, right before the final two AR of the season. So <laughs> there we go. Me too. <laughs> Me too.
All right. Let's wrap this season up. The F, the critique. Like, okay, so I set my timer in the 2AC for six minutes. I set my timer for the 2AR for nine minutes. So, all right, there we go. <laughs> All right, then I'll start in a few seconds. So many dropped warrants from the case from the one in R that it's not even funny at this point. Fascism comes first and they have conceded all of our arguments about how fascism is becoming worse now, which means our practice is necessarily good because we don't strategize against fascism incoming now that it's going to replicate their impacts. People are shot in their homes right now because fascism has turned inward as the precarities from settler uh, anti-black anxiety are continuing uh, to perpetuate warfare against native and black people in the United States. That's our one AC Robinson image completely dropped coming out of the two in R, which is an easy enough ballot. This is the easiest ballot for you to vote on for the affirmative because they have conceded that fascism is the root cause for those impasse as it is the settler anti-black anxiety turned inward from settler colonialism and anti-blackness failing uh, in the status quo, which is a unique uh, reason why you have to vote for the permutation because only uh, the only our, only our method is able to contest uh, the material implications of fascism that they have not theorized about. Now onto the critique. They have conceded, basically conceded the framework arguments and all the offense that Grant went for in the uh, one AR, for example, they have conceded the exceptionalism offense from uh, their framework, uh, from the framework pillar that says they uniquely be make native experience become a junior partner in terms of, of relationality and in terms of strategizing against, uh, strategizing against anti-blindness in the status quo, but their uh, framework is accessible by the permutation, but not uh, they do not get access to ours because they have conceded our fascism arguments. They only think only breath, only breath they have on the fascism arguments is essentially uh, that they uh, that the alternative solves the case. So our fascism arguments doesn't matter, which I'll get onto in a second. Robinson assumes ontology and says it still gets worse, which means you have to vote affirmative, which means it's still contingent on those forms of settler fascism, replicating a uh, native and black death across the status quo. Now they uh, made arguments that uh, black, uh, they made arguments that uh, black people experience to have not only experience loss, but lose the experience to experience loss. But our Robinson evidence answers that, uh, which I'll do in a minute. Uh, I'll do that in a minute when I uh, send the Robinson 20 evidence, but they uh, said that blackness constitutes the void, but there's no uh, warrant to this. And there's no reason why blackness is exceptional in this, considering they drop all the actual warrants from another Robinson evidence, but also, uh, that means there's no romanticization offense because grounded relationality and fascism uniquely resolve it because of the contingent collaboration offense that goes completely drops coming out of the two and are now. Uh, let's talk about, uh, let's, uh, yeah couple of arguments on the Robinson debate. They have conceded that destroying black placemaking created the fungibility uh, for black people that they have conceded out of the two and are. That means uh, that they have cleared all black people of meaning. They have cleared uh, black people of their spatial relation. They have cleared black people as a side of space and turned into the black fungible body. That is the arguments that our Robinson evidence is making, but they have also conceded the Robinson 20 evidence from the two AC that uniquely talks about how uh, native sovereignty has always been seen as the void from the position of the settler master, which is why our Leroy exceptionalism arguments and the permutation are so unnecessary because their theory is just wrong at this point. It at least necessitates a conversation about why their theory is wrong because a native sovereign, a native sovereignty has never been been able to reclaim by the settler master as long as the settler has existed here has been antithetical to native sovereignty because other problem of colonialism still remains, which means that we have unique offense here. Now they made an example previously in the debate about like Spain uh, not necessarily recognizing uh, not uh, like having a hesitation when it came to the indigenous uh, people of uh, on the on Turtle Island, but they don't question why Spain. Spain was there in the first place. Sure, Spain uh, wanted to find a new route, a new route for trade, etc. But then, why the fuck did Spain stay? It was because uh, they saw these new uh, frontiers and had a thirst for expansion, which uniquely uh, means that the thirst for expansion created the conditions for the fungibility of blackness to be articulated on this land, which is the reason why you have to vote for the permutation and all of our exceptionalism offense. I'm going to do the exceptionalism offense here. There's no reason of analogy because our argument is the co constitutive nature of anti blackness and native uh, violence means that you can't reduce one to the other and that they are equal and same, which means no offense. And their framework goes affirmative because it also creates a reason for our uh, triadic understanding of settler colonialism and anti blackness because it avoids collapsing one into the other. Our argument is that they are twin antagonisms that co constitute another way and not separate processes, which means that the alternative will not be able to solve it because it always frames this form of native violence and native people as junior partners in this and are, which means their analytic understanding is one that is bad at the level of research for indigenous people instead. 
they also suspend, or you should suspend exceptionalism in both black and indigenous studies as a side constraint because the affirmative participates in an exceptionalizing frame by collapsing the struggles of indigenous folk into the liberal multi uh, multicultural call uh, for inclusion or modes of racialization, which are unique reasons why you cannot uh, vote for the alternative because they have the wrong framework of violence. They have wrong conceptions of sovereignty, which means that the alternative will be bad for native people. The negative is invested in this exceptionalism at the very level it requires slavery as the necessity to, uh, necessity to understand violence as a radical creates the condition of the world that means that there's a native colonization that must be relegated to a lesser antagonism that becomes the junior partner offense. Now, the politics that claim to be antagonistic to this world structurally cannot be anti-indigenous, which is a unique uh, reason why the permutation still results all of their offense because all of their offense is about modernity structuring violence. Keep going. It solves all of their dissads to the affirmative in turns of uh, the consent dissad. They have conceded the contingent collaboration arguments uh, coming out of the uh, 1AR, uh, coming out of the uh, 1AR, and they have not answered that contingent relations with one another turns the consent dissad because it allows us to have moments of pausing at the impasse and where our uh, struggles collide with each other. There are examples of like urban gardening or urban gardening and Bible trees that are unique to black people's relationship to this land that have to be uh, theorized about. Otherwise, those relationships and those conversations about those relationships are not useful. Now they have conceded uh, that the, uh, the exceptionalism offense is the best mechanism for analysis because they uh yeah, because they have conceded the exceptionalism offense from uh, Leroy, specifically the argument about uh, the junior partner debate. Now they, on the alternative, solves the case. It just doesn't because it doesn't have a mechanism to resolve settler fascism in the status quo that has to be resolved through material conditions and the shared relationality that the one AC uniquely creates because their vision of sovereignty is wrong. It means those relationalities do uh, not be, uh, are not able to be formulated. Now they have conceded the two in our double bind that they can't win the totalization of, black, of blackness as violence without uh, because they have to reconcile that with our examples as to how spatiality produces moments of black life. To win that, they have to write out all native demands, turns the entirety of the uh, alternative. Good debate. Good debate. Great debate, Fantastic Texas. Fantastic debate. Thank you all.
Hi, everyone. If you're out there, we have a decision in the 2021 CETA National Championship final round. All right. I see the competitors. I see, I think, all the judges. Can people check me? Will somebody just make a motion? Is there anybody we're missing that I don't see? There should be Leia Vlogri. Okay, got a thumbs up from Vlogri. Perfect. I'm trying to look. I don't think we're missing anybody else. So unless somebody, feel free to unmute yourself and stop me if I'm about to do something I shouldn't. All right. Hey, congratulations to all four of you. And thank you to all nine judges in the final round. Um, I just want to say on behalf of CETA, and on behalf of the community of your alumni who were posting literally hundreds of messages of support throughout this debate, um, and to all of your teams and coaches and everybody you all thanked in your speeches who got you here, I just wanna say on behalf of all of us, we're so proud of you. Uh, this was a really wonderful debate um, and it was a very, very close decision to determine the 2021 CETA national champion. Congratulations on a 5-4 decision the winner in the 2021 Seed National Champion is the University of Texas. Congratulations, y'all. Incredible tournaments, all four of you. I'm going to turn it over to a great panel. Thank you all so much. Okay, so nobody want to talk. That's fine. Um, I, I uh, set for the affirmative. Uh, congratulations, everybody. Wonderful uh, careers, they say, and, and great debating. I'll start by saying everyone's good at debate, all things equal. But for me, this debate was messy and a bit underwhelming. The comparative clash was just like lacking. Everybody's winning some shit and nobody's revolve, resolving other people's shit. So it's really hard for me to decide the debate. And I think I was the last in. Um, so if all things is kind of equal to me and the comparative um, quality of your evidence is also high, affirmative and negative, everybody's reading good cards. Um, I think it makes it like, you know, very difficult, but I vote affirmative for grounded relationality that can grapple with intercommunal violence and produce a placefulness for black and indigenous persons simultaneously that intervenes on a cascading fascism, some of which captures, I think your Breonna Taylor offense because it's about turning that settler anxiety inward, et cetera. I think the permutation is really persuasive to me in part because I don't wanna collapse anyone's shit and risk intercommunal violence, least of all be culpable for the folding in that comes with some of that exceptionalism. The affirmative has been the only one continuously advancing this filter for the argument for the permutation that I don't have to collapse one or other or preference one, but they can exist simultaneously. And though the negative has some offense to that existence simultaneously, it's not, I think, enough comparatively to overcome the net benefit of the permutation so that I think it can produce a better structural analytic that theorizes a fuller phenomena um, and that the offense of folding in, like I said, is mitigated some. Um, and I think the way that they're just describing this also undercuts some of your ruse of analogy, analogy arguments because I just don't think that that's like how they're saying it, though your debating is um, quality so that there's like link application there. I think at the level of abstraction, the negative might be right that there's some concepts of native sovereignty that endanger parasiticism and you have examples for that. But simultaneously, AF has also examples for grounded relationality that provides an opportunity for place and spatial relations to the land that are possible for black people. And it's just kind of like, who is right? Both of you all have quality cards. I don't fucking know. Like, there are good arguments for why I shouldn't have to resolve some of these details in the way I think the negative is trying to force me to. Um, and I think there's not nearly enough work being done on the specificity of the AFS praxis. Their Tuck and Leroy evidence in particular, I think is just comparatively better than some of your sex and arguments and some of your spin, the two in R that for sort of dual theorizations of settler colonialism, anti-blackness and settles the, the big issue that I have with the negative, which is that there feels like there's very little theorization of settler colonialism or settlement from the negative, but significant offense to the folding in of anti-blackness into frames of indigeneity and settler colonialism. So I think like, the AF wins that they create agential relationships to the land, 
that black people can go through this in a myriad of ways, hence the examples, that placelessness doesn't have to be the future horizon where we can have kind of like a dual contingent collusion, which doesn't always require it. Like they specifically say something like it's messy, doesn't always require us to get along and like fuck with each other like that, but we can be oriented towards fucking up the same shit and that's persuasive to me. I don't think that the alternative solves the case both because of the lack of the two in our push and explanation on this question, but also because you don't really offer a texture on how you solve fascism almost at all, which they've said is intrinsic to settler colonialism and certainly a stronger internal link. I think the extensions of the Wilderson and the song evidence is where I spent the longest time thinking, can I just vote on these like consent arguments? A better execution of the woods answer the permutation and a push on how you can resolve intramural violence, which would frankly, the last part be pretty new, but nonetheless helpful, will probably yield a negative ballot for me. And I think that that Wilderson and Song consent argument needs to be like a much larger piece of the 2 and R and needs to be contextualized to like black relationships of placelessness and land, not just at the level of indigenous persons because they've had some defense that it's not about like us fucking with each other, but you fucking with the land. And that's certainly possible vis-a-vis -vis their evidence um, and some kind of combined execution um, differentials between the, the 2 and R and, and some of the block choices. Um, that just have me a little apprehensive voting on that alone. But um, yeah, that was an interesting debate. That's how I saw it. Uh, I can go next if um, no one else wants to. Uh, I, I agree with a lot of that. I definitely agree that I think both sides do a really great explanation of their own stuff without really any kind of comparison with uh, their opponents. Uh, I think that um, I'm skeptical about uh, both the permutation slash affirmative and the alternative's ability to reckon with uh, modern fascism. I think that um, like the Breonna Taylor example and a few others are ones that are, yeah, I, I definitely gives me a pause for thinking that the, the, there is any way for the permutation to resolve those things. At the same time, I, I think that uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I definitely question whether or not the permutation slash affirmative is uh, sufficient. I think, though, the affirmative has one that it is necessary if you hope to challenge the way that uh, modern fascism is executed. Um, I think that uh, just you know, definitely the uh, affirmative evidence makes clear that any strategy that subordinates the strategy against settler colonialism um, is one that is doomed to failure because that is what is you know uh, one of the processes that is fueling this modern fascism uh which i think kind of takes out a lot of the just I, this this like try or dieness for the alternative that i i like or that like it, it makes genocide inevitable genocide is inevitable uh I, I i think that the i think the af kind of you know captures that try or die like i'm not sure if this uh permutation is going to be is going to be sufficient to resolve these things but i don't think i'm, I'm sure the alternative doesn't it isn't uh, if I uh, think that it you know, kind of resorts to this um, antagonistic battle uh, that you know each side necessarily sees itself as a um, uh, junior partner. Uh, um, uh, what did I want to say? Uh, I, yeah, I, I definitely agree uh, about the Tuck and the Leroy evidence. I think just like starting the 2HC, the app is like, this is the evidence that you're going to use to read the, uh, all of the evidence in this debate, and I think that's accurate, to, at least to my decision. I think that uh, it's it's it speaks to the dismissiveness of some of the negative authors uh, to the concept that um, yeah, like if, if there's like indigenous uh, struggles kind of have to be combined um, with struggles against anti-blackness. Uh, I think that um, it, like it, it makes it difficult for me to to like default negative on some of these link questions because the app evidence I think is correctly, uh, like the app is correctly pointing out that a lot of the, the a lot, like it's hard to read the negative evidence if I'm using this filter in a way that's not like that, uh, yeah, like without, without, without the neg kind of reckoning with the, the Leroy evidence, uh, it makes it difficult for me to read it in a way that isn't like overly pessimistic, I guess, to, almost to say that uh, that there isn't any possibility for a contingent collaboration, as the affirmative puts it. Uh, I also, um, yeah, I, I think that just add the, also the Robinson 20 evidence uh, uh, basically says that any of these strategies that doesn't uh, you know, believe in like a connection with the land is equivalent to native genocide. So I, I'm also not willing to risk the alternative, uh, the strategy of the alternative, which it feels like is in, you know, necessarily uh, 
uh, you know, re results in genocide. So I, I think that I, I definitely think that the negative is winning a lot of inroads to like why the affirmative can't resolve everything. But I don't think that they've won a compelling reason not to do, uh, not to try this strategy, especially like all these, I think, framing arguments about how like we should just uh, like even again, kind of separate from the truthiness of the of the permutation that like we should uh, we should assume that they are not antagonistic that we should assume that there is a that we should like we should take a pause on that antagonism i think is the evidence i think that's the tuck evidence um and i think that there needs to be some kind of question to that so even if you're right about the link arguments uh, i think the affirmative is one that we should still um you know like you know try to collaborate contingently um yeah, there are a lot of judges left to go, so I'll let them go. But I want to echo fantastic debate. Congratulations on the end of the season. How do I go next? Uh, I voted affirmative because I thought that the, the methodology of a grounded relationality, i.e. explained through examples of walking the land and contingent cooperation, gives us thoughts, ideas, tools to press back, press back against fascism, which I think the affirmative is one can get worse. Uh, I think that the negative does substantially reduce how efficacious I think this methodology is and the negative ballot that I did write started with that argument. Uh, and if grounded relationality had been left as a sort of shallow theory without many examples, I don't think I would have voted affirmative, but I think that there is just enough from those explanations of walking the land in contingent cooperation that gets me across the finish line to say that there is some usefulness to what the affirmative is author offering in terms of pushing back fascism. The vast majority of my decision is spent on the ne negative examples of talking about the contestation that uh, about Africa and Breonna Taylor. And I, I very quickly conclude that the affirmative gets part of the affirmative wrong. And I, the first question I write that I have to answer is, can the AF get something wrong and still win? And I think that the AF is built to say, we can, we can make mistakes, we can be wrong about certain things. And, and that's part of the conversation that happens when we walk the land, which is why the method is a good idea. I, I think if the affirmative had been I think switching a ballot would probably be being more clear on this question. Maybe I'm, you know, postulating there. But but that's sort of what got me that the affirmative does not has to be have to be perfect. They can make mistakes. The me the methodology can still be good. Um, the second thing that gets me across the finish line is the framing question that the affirmative says that we can win probably some, if not a lot of arguments inside the negative framework, but they can't win much in ours. The double bind about genocide is a particularly compelling argument to me. Um, I'm gonna keep it real short because you're gonna hear a lot of decisions, happy to answer questions later. I had no idea how this one was gonna come down. I prepared myself mentally to be on the bottom of an eight one or, or you know, a smaller margin on the top maybe. Uh, this was a, a great debate. Thank you for letting me adjudicate it. Um, yeah, okay. I also sat. Um, so I thought this was a great debate. Um, uh, yeah, I thought that the negative was winning a risk that the AF might not solve fascism. And I do give you a risk of your woods extension because I don't think there's an answer to it. And I think that the pivot in the tune are to say that their entire focus has been on the loss of land, which is not our argument, which is our argument, you know, the capacity to lose one one's relation to the loss of land in the first place. I thought that was a good argument. I um, also appreciate the pick articulation or in relationship to the catalyzation of the affirmative. I just thought that the Woods evidence wasn't getting at the articulation of the two years argument about the permutation. I think the ability to not always have positive relations between indigeneity and anti-blackness is inevitability, given the squo, and that, you know, kind of resolves your argument about how there might be violent forms of indigeneity. The permutation, at least for me, allows indigeneity not to be thrown away under liberal multiculturalism. Uh, I think the 1AR and the 2AR have like excellent articulations of the exceptionalism offense, but how it's try to die for the AF. So I think that soaks up some of the residual inevitability claims you attempt to leverage against the AF at the end of the debate. 
Uh, I think not dealing with the Robinson evidence ends up hurting you because it lets the two ER control the direction of the theory of power, gesturing towards questions the alternative doesn't have an answer for or can't answer. It's kind of what they end up doing. Uh, I think they have too much offense against why destroying placemaking is bad. You do not have enough of a reason about why the alternative isn't destroying placemaking. And so I think the perm resolves the reverse of analogy to set and then twin antagonism framing solves most of the links you're attempting to leverage against the F at the end of the debate. And I think that at the end of the day, I, if I can't write out all indigenous demands, and if there's a risk, the F can resolve the complicity in maintaining native genocide through a try to die approach towards grounded relationality, then I think the permutation gets out of most of the link debate based on the 2AR. Uh, compare that to the alternative by itself. I don't know why the AF doesn't get the permutation, the impact explanation about making genocide inevitable. I think it'd be more persuasive to me if it wasn't like, you know, well, it's just a pick and I don't really know what the alternative can resolve, what portion it can resolve the AF. And I just thought the consent argument was resolved by the permutation, the fact you didn't really get have any in-depth analysis of that. You spent too much time on the Wilderson and Song stuff. So it was kind of hard for me to decide. So I just wonder. Um, can I go first? Because I'm tired, y'all. Um, all right. Uh, this is an excellent debate. Thank you for ending our, uh, the, the, the season. Um, just like an awesome scholarship. This was dope. Um, especially UCO, the last two debates from y'all. Kudos. Y'all been good all season. Um, happy to see uh, Grant, your career ending on such a high note of scholarship. And this is just excellent, excellent uh, uh, scholarship. And Zach, awesome to see you in your career on a high note as well. Watching you grow has been dope as hell. Um, you've gone through so many phases. So clap, clap, clap for y'all. Um, I wrote a whole bunch. I really don't want to read all this. I'm just going to read some of it. Um, I vote next for y'all. I think the neck has won their overarching thesis claim about ontology and how it overdetermines the way that contingent processes of trying to reclaim slash produce relationality operate and result in net more slash new forms of anti-black violence because they want a thesis claim about how violence in the world is structured. I think the threshold for the link debate is small and the risk means I should prefer to squall. There are two links I find I found, that I found persuasive. The first was the romanticization link, the sexton link argument that you cherry pick moments of black social life to justify black social death. I think this argument counteracts with the examples of making connections with the land as a justification for your forms of relationality. The second is the redemption arc link. This is where I spend a lot of my time thinking about. Basically, I think that they've critiqued, uh, but basically think, uh, think that they've critiqued the possibility of two things. First, the possibility of a grounded relationality from black folks that is overdetermined by violence slash suture to anti-black violence. This coupled with the consent to set, this world is in the song evidence, paints a grim picture of how the affirmative forces black people to relive anti-black trauma in the name of your project of grounded relationality, i.e. the lynching tree example, where it's like you're forced to look at the lynching tree, you really don't have any choice, it's inevitable and it's necessary. And it's like, wow, black people don't have consent to do that. I think that weighed heavenly on my decision. The second is the possibility of reconceptualizing sovereignty, whether or not natives can act Access sovereignty and the theorizations of why or why not are inaccessible to the absolute unsovereign. Sorry, to the absolute unsovereign. This coupled with their defense of <coughs> sorry, genocide as a sufficient analytic for their alternative to describe anti-indigenous violence seems to suggest that the alternative resolves the worst parts of the affirmative. Now the offense in this debate, I think Texas does a good job of shielding your best piece of offense, which is the Leroy evidence on the permutation by first positing that genocide is a good enough analytic. So there's no need for sovereignty and discussion of the one seen. if anything, that's just a link to the criticism. And B is that this is a ploy to re-indigenize that side set discussions of woods, which is of anti-blackness, which is the woods evidence on the permutation. I also think Texas is doing just a decent job of isolating some external offense that the alt can't solve and the permutation cannot solve. But I think that they short circuit your ability to go for this Leroy stuff because I think that they're like, we're not we're not essentializing you. We just think that our analytic is sufficient and trying to like force us to have these conversations and come to the table is just a method of re-indigenizing uh, or I think equilibrium, disequilibrium, equilibrium, which uh, doesn't really fix fascism, but if anything forces black people to relive black trauma over and over and over again, uh, which reproduces new forms of anti blackness et cetera, or at least forces us to like live within that moment or that idea of the void, the unsovereign, which is the alternative already. So why not just start there? Um, I wrote that, I wrote a bunch more, but uh, that is the crux of everything that I've written. Um, Question, comments, concerns, holla at me. Great career for my seniors. Uh, good night.
I agree with a lot of that. Um, shout out to all the seniors. I think that y'all were amazing and it was good to see you all, you know, stick through even though it's late and just go for it. Um, I think the one AR and the two AR lean heavy into this like impending fascism debate without considering the negative position that this contingent structure of violence is made possible by the total climate of anti-blackness. Um, under this climate, I don't really know what it means for fascism to get worse in relation to the violence that's visited upon the black body. I think that the AF leaves blackness in the position of the unthought because the negative proves that each instance that you give about black people's material experience in relation to land romanticizes black life and because the AF also does not spill up to and or result in instances like community gardens or Bible tree studies or gatherings. Um, I find the Corinne Gaines examples compelling because land sovereignty in this instance cannot explain the gratuity enacted on her body, even though she occupied a space that was legally designated as hers. I think that the negative really missed an opportunity to explain the distinctions between the negative, the, 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 the affirmative and the negative slash generally impact turn grounded relationality by way of this Bible tree studies business. Um, after you ask a question in cross text about lynching, I would have liked to see that see you reframe the question away from does land have agental capacity to what in what ways does land trees and other things have uh, agency and I think that you could use that to frame the AF as an attempt to reimagine the site of the lynching as a group of black people sitting around a tree reading Bibles, which we have to keep in mind that Christianity itself was enforced onto the slaves as a purification slash civilization project. Um, I think that you can say that in this instance, trees were indeed active participants in the pornotropic violence present at the site of the lynching. Um, and, and, and that was in many ways a public spectacle. And so it's like, you know, even if you would compare this to something like uh, public hangings uh, as a site of violence, I think the presence of the tree um, within lynchings make, you know, makes it a specific kind of like form of violence that has a very specific relationship to like trees and nature and things of whatnot, which kind of adds to your overall argument that you're going about about the total climate of anti-blackness. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I, I just think that, um, you know, I think the negative is doing a better job of explaining why just having the relationship to to land or under or using land as an analytic as prescribed by the AF is just a bad idea. Yeah, so um, I thought this was a good, really good debate. Um, uh, although I, I kind of echo um, from Jalisa onward that, you know, while it was a very intellectually rich debate, there just was a lot of two ships passing in the night at points. And that made the end of the debate really difficult to decide. Um, I think maybe I am, came in somewhat of a different place um, from some folks in the sense that um, for me, I just thought that a big problem for the affirmative throughout the debate was kind of two fundamental things. Um, one, that you need to get into the textures of the examples more. Um, there's several places in the 2AR where there's like an enthymematic appeal that you're correct about the history that is just not filled out for me. Your extension of the Leroy and Robinson evidence in particular, and frankly, to be honest, I think this Leroy card is a very good card, but even the card itself just like ends with like, and Sexton is just like incorrect about this history. And I was sort of like, well, I mean, why though? And so the, the problem you have is that the evidence to me doesn't speak for itself, nor is the enthymeme completed to explain why you're incorrect. I have, for example, when you're talking about placemaking, um, you say Robinson 20 from the 2AC native sovereignty is always seen as the void from the perspective of the settler master. Their theory is just wrong and necessitates conversation. And I'm like, well, but why is it wrong? And one of the things that the 1AR was really good on for me was ungrounding as a way of leveraging rela the relationality arguments on the permutation, because that's the ontology argument that the affirmative has to say that the negative is just wrong about the history. And without that, you're just left with uh, this grounded relationality argument is sort of just like a, the praxis is good kind of claim. The second place where I think you have problems, and I can talk more about the historical examples in just a second and go through some of the links, but the second place that I have a little bit of an issue for um, the affirmative is that um, I think you're behind on the framework debate, um, to be quite honest. I think they're winning that the question of this debate is not so much praxis as it is the question of um, rubrics and grammars of analysis, and that to decide that the debate is fundamentally about praxis itself begs the question of the link. Um, it's a little frustrating to decide this kind of debate. And like one of the things I struggle with in some of these debates about settler colonialism and anti-blackness is that they're just like, everything begs the question of every other portion of the debate. And it's like very chicken and egg. But, and so I think that that's why I say the resolution could have been a little bit cleaner, but to me, it's like, okay, well, you're 
answer to arguments about ontology is to make an argument about praxis, which begs the question of whether or not your historical rubric for analysis is correct. When I get to that portion of the flow, your description of the history is more enthematic and references back to 2AC evidence, which is good rhetorically, but doesn't actually fill out the historical portion of the evidence. And the Sexton evidence, while you know, I, I agree with um, Malosha's characterization of this evidence as dismissive in some ways and, and extremely strident, is quite historically rich in its description of some of the stuff that's, that's happened to um, make indigenous politics parasitic on anti-Black violence. Um, to the point that um, Ant made earlier, I, I think the sovereignty, the, lo the loss of the capacity for loss argument is the link I voted on. And I think it's, it's kind of a problem um, for the affirmative that just like, you're sort of like, well, we could like talk about it. And it's like, well, but what would the conversation be? Like, what, what does that entail? And then to me, that's like doubled by the force of some of these block examples. I didn't think that the Gates Jr. example was as persuasive as just like the Dred Scott example that they gave that like the Supreme Court, you made explicit reference to indigeneity as a point of contrast with blackness in you know, um, depriving blackness of personhood. So to me, they got some leverage there on loss of the capacity for loss versus a sort of position of, you know, absolute dereliction or whatever. So I think they are, they're making a differentiation at the level of ontology about how your politics are different. To me, that's important because the debate by the end of the debate is about grammars of analysis. Um, one of the other things that I forgot to say for why I evaluate the debate as a question of, uh, sorry, grammars of suffering is because of the sex and evidence that I don't think is answered that is read, I think in the one in R that says that there's a, makes a uniqueness claim that there's already too many plans um, and there's just not enough grammar of analysis. And I just didn't think that card was answered. Um, and I have similar concerns while aesthetically the extension of woods um, could be better and needs to just be like front and center. Um, for me, I thought that card was just like A plus that like got very little airtime. While aesthetically, I'm not super excited about how it was extended in the two and R, the evidence is very good. And I think coupled with some of these specific historical examples, as well as this argument about sovereignty and the capacity, uh, the loss of the capacity for loss, they have a link and they have an argument why that link then gets swept under the rug. And then they have an argument for why that link outweighs praxis because there's already too many plans, if that makes sense. Um, I have similar issues with your arguments about fascism on case and the evidence you read about this. I think the negative could be better at indicting this evidence. Very little is said about it from the negative. So I'm very sympathetic to all the decisions that, that forefront that. But I also think this card is like, it's just not it's just not great on the key question that you're trying to leverage it for which is why things get worse when you're already in a position of absolute dereliction i just don't i don't know what that means and i can't really envision what it looks like and every time i go to look for a description of what worseness is what what the what the you know the measure is to calculate worseness it's just again it's left a little bit enthematic and to me that actually kind of speaks to the question not to get too like you know, abstract, although the, the negative is asking me to do that. Um, you know, the fact that you can't really say what that worseness is actually sort of proves the point that the negative is making, that there is no like metric to, to speak about blackness unless it's confronted directly, like terms like fascism simply just do not get at that register of violence. So to me, they I, I don't I don't see that as being like, you know, big offense. And I do think, um, Again, if ungrounding is more, oh, sorry, ungeography, excuse me. If ungeography and this evidence about McKittrick is more of the, the ontology portion of it is more of the 2AR, then I think I'm voting affirmative on the permutation. But without that, um, you know, I'm in a position where I do sort of think, that, much like Devon, that I think that genocide by itself is sufficient. Um, not, not ideal, it's problematic but it's preferable given what I'm being asked to adjudicate in this debate by the end of it. And, and that again is the question of grammars of suffering because of the uniqueness argument from Sexton and because I'm empathetic to the um, negative about the historical examples, which themselves have to be considered before I can evaluate the question of what the role of the ballot is. So great debate. Um, yeah. Um, Going to be probably a little bit repetitive, but I think that there, I agree that the ontology debate ends up going negative. I think that the negatives out historicizing pretty sufficiently, especially the spin. I'm sitting 
left sitting like the Breonna Taylor example and the Africa example to prove just how your analytic is insufficient to kind of explain the gratuitous nature of anti-Black violence, which probably means that the F ends up being that kind of arc, arc of redemption and leaving Black people in the unthought. Um, I think there are two things in the 2AR that are kind of like ref, are, there's one thing in the 1AR and a piece in the 2AR that I wish had happened the 1AR at the very bottom, you're like, they have to win every single instance. We only have to win a couple. I think if that framing is blown up at the top and then at the very bottom of the 2AR, there's a question of like, but why did we go over and like manifest destiny our way through? And that doesn't really happen prior in the debate. Uh, and there's a whole cross X moment of just like talking about the Spaniards and there's the Dred Scott example that just never get counter defined or counter explained. Um, so I think only the alternative can kind of create a sufficient as kind of like Sean just said, analytic without kind of becoming parasitic uh, and create some form of like land reclamation, I guess. Um, and I also don't totally understand what the AF actually does to result in forms of praxis. Uh, you kind of reference a bunch of these examples, which I think is part of the romanticization DA. And there's kind of like a, that's example of kind of the parasitic nature that I really just don't understand how you connect to either the Bible example or how you connect to any of the litany examples of people doing land relationality. I just don't understand how you spill up to that. So I don't give you a lot of that materiality stuff regardless. The fascism stuff, I just am kind of left questioning what to do with that. I don't think you understand how fascism ends up getting created when they are winning kind of that ontology debate. And then just like, I, I don't how you understand how you solve it either. That's TLDR. I have very little that's new or additive to the decisions that have already occurred. I decided the debate almost identically to Sean. Um, I agree that the the framework debate is the thing that kept giving me pause. Um, and then the other thing that I just want to echo is that something that's been mentioned by uh, uh, other judges already, which is that there's very little um, resolution of points of contestation and stuff just floating around requiring me to figure it out. And you don't want to be in a position where I have to figure it out because when I figure it out, I I try really hard, but it might not be the way that you want me to figure it out. And when I look at it, it might be not the way that you want me to be looking at it. Or when I read it, it might be with a different mind or eye to how I'm reading it. And so that always is really helpful for me is when you kind of let me know how you think those things can be resolved. And some more of that from either side um, would have been probably made it a little bit easier for me to resolve um, uh, resolve some of these questions. You know, so I think that the um, the the framework competing role of the ballot claims is something that I thought about first, and I uh, resolved that question um, in line for the uh, for the negative. Um, and the the other thing that I thought about for a while was the permutation. I want just a quick note for me on the permutation. I think that I probably well, not probably, but there's a better chance that I'm voting for the permutation if there's a moment in the 2AR where it's like, here's the permutation, here's what it does, here's what it's attached to, here's how it resolves these things. Um, because I think that the Woods evidence that's, I, I don't know what the answer to the Woods evidence is, I think it just cuts the permutation off. So the way that it's like deployed five or six times in five or six different places in the 2AR was tough for me to figure that out. Um, but I, I mean, that's, that's, I'm not saying anything new here. So um, here's what I will say. Excellent debate, everyone. Thank you so much for including me in, in this. Um, Zach and Grant, congratulations on wonderful careers. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it's hard, and uh, I just want to thank everybody. And uh, the other eight judges, it was really nice working with you. This is fantastic. Thank everybody. I thank, thank you to everybody. It's fantastic. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Uh, great job, Zach. Congratulations, Texas. You all have a great night. Let's go to sleep. Go Broncos. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone. Um, thank all of you. Uh, Texas, amazing debate. Um, hey, I hope to see you next year in a bunch of debates. Um, yeah, thank you to all the judges. One time for Grant Colquitt. Congratulations, man. Great Grant great. Colquitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Grant, you love. Grant, you a senior? You brought it. Seniors brought it. Feel proud, man. I, I mean, tough decision, close debate. Feel proud. Every debate, and I judge too many fucking Elams, excuse my language. <laughs> Every debate I saw you debating, it's like, whew, that human is good.
feel proud. You definitely held it fucking down. And as a black person judging these debates, I don't get to judge as many debates as I would prefer where non-black people say things that are reasonable as fuck. And I appreciated it. It was great. You just did the thing. So head up. I can't even respond right now, Jay. I will. When I like gather myself, I'll send you something. But that meant so much to me. And thank you all so much. I'm so sorry. I like can't talk anymore. Uh, but thank you all so much. Just big clap for Grant, the oldest person I know in debate. <laughs> Great stuff, y'all. Congratulations, Texas. Great work. And thank Congratulations you about themes. Awesome stuff.